women tend to hold on to a big part of their ego that says, I've invested so much in this man. I cannot walk away. Like how many women have you heard that say like, I made him a man and now I'm going to let him go and be a man for somebody else. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Coffee Breakup Story. My Michelle. And Chris Vera. Chris Vera. So, before we begin, please, if you're watching us, well, this is going to be already on Patreon for the full, yep, the full video. So, thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for being a part of it. If by any chance you aren't, you're listening know, to, yeah, you can listen you to could us. You can be listening to us Subs- on Spotify and uh, the podcast app, iTunes, yeah. on, uh, on your Apple iPhone or whatever. But um, we are also on uh, social media, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and Twitter. Twitter, we, we have a website, website. coffeebreakup.com, some merch, check us out, new updates, new info, everything you can find on there. Yes. And today we have a, <laughs> a special guest. <gadget. laughs> <laughs> we got Alex on the show. Hey, hello, Alex. Hello. What's how up, Alex? You? What's up? How are you doing? We apologize for keeping you a little waiting. No, it's okay. I love <laughs> how you guys introduce each other. Like you say, yeah. sorry, Marvin. Yeah, 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 I have to. <laughs> it's a must at this point. It's a must. How are you? Good, good. I'm doing great. Yeah, uh-huh. welcome on our show. I mean, we're at a, at a new studio. Almost like f- a new studio, 50K on, okay. on Instagram. Uh, almost. almost. 49K. 49. 180 and on TikTok. So we're growing and looking. Doing here. great. The space looks great. Thank you, you like so much. Yeah, yeah we've gotten a lot of a lot of good feedback for, for yeah, the yeah. space. She came in. So oh, we got awesome. Yeah, it kind of yeah, has you. like a very cigar lounge vibe. Yeah, it was moody. Like, oh, I really moody. like it. I really like it. I'm into it. I'm into Thank it. you so much. Awesome, yeah. Awesome. Um, you know, we've been doing this for a little bit now, and finally we got our own setup, our own space, which allows us to record whenever. And so, I mean, we're glad to have you on now. And now you reached out to to us. You're like, hey, I have the story I want to share. I do. And most importantly, what came from it and where I am now. And I think people could help, can 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 take this into yeah. advisement and they can really learn from it. And when you brought up the story briefly, you had said it. I was like, I definitely would want her on because yeah. that's something that people could relate. And it kind of just goes to show perseverance, right. overcoming challenges and obstacles. And there's going to be a lot of people who are like, man, I'm in the same position. I can't get over this. Absolutely. How did you? So that's kind of why I wanted to bring you on and, um, and, and, and kind of give you the floor and kind of introduce yourself, where you're from, and most importantly, share that story and where you are now. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. So my name is Alex. I am a full-time makeup artist in Miami. I was born and raised here. I'm the youngest of three. I'm 26. Um, on my off time when I'm not working, I go to the gym a lot. I love being out on the water. Pretty chill. <laughs> oh, I cook a lot. I'm like a chef now. You're yeah, a chef. yeah, that's what I'm into right now. What do you? Okay. What? What's your like best dish? I really chef. okay. I made a really really good ramen. Like my ramen right now. When you, is isn't that the thing? You you boil the water. You pour it in the cup. That's no, it. no, no. But this is like instant ramen. This is like <laughs> this is like Michelin star ramen when I'm nice. cooking. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Five stars. Really proud about it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really good at it. You gotta move it up for us. Yeah, know the recipe. Awesome. Okay. And so now you're a full-time makeup artist. Yeah, I have been artist. for the last four years. I love okay. what I do. I'm, I'm very happy. And you're, you're on your own time, your own schedule, Correct. the whole shebang. Yeah, the whole shebang. Must awesome. be nice. <laughs> yeah, a, he was he was telling me uh, about the, your, your nine it. to fives. Yeah, yeah nine, nine to fives. Well, no, oh, starting Monday. So the reason why I had my happy hour yesterday was two things. My boss... Well, no, the manager of that of that center, she's going to somewhere else, so another to another financial center, another branch, and then me, I'm also changing. So now moving forward, I'm going to be working ten till four instead of oh, nine till five. What? Nice. I know more time for myself, more time for same her. same pay, coffee break, yeah, same pay. No. Wow, and it's literally bro closer to the crib. Really, where's it at? So I, I was working on Fourteenth and Alton on the beach. Now I'm on Ninth and Washington, and I'm on Fourth and Ocean. I oh, was closer to where you were. Yeah, there. super, super close. You yeah. gonna walk over there? I, I'm thinking about getting a scooter. <laughs> yeah, fucking whooped it One of my coworkers has yeah. a little fucking scooter. Yeah. He always shows up. You should. You should get a scooter. Yeah, those things you know are on super. You know, on the beach on Fridays at like 7 a.m., they do yoga right on the sand. Oh. Have you done that? You should do that. Oh, by On South yeah. Point? Yeah, you, South by South Point. Point. I don't want to. You I've live seen, on the beach. You I've seen go. them. I've seen them. I've seen them. They're really nice. It's like it's really nice. I went once and it like reset my whole vibe. <sighs> Wait, is it freaking uh, Bianca? Doesn't she do? No, she does workouts. She does workout on the beach on the for same. hotels. Shout out to you, uh, Bianca. Bianca. Yeah, oh, she was on. The, she was cool on the show people. a little while ago. But yeah, she was doing like workouts on the beach as well. So maybe I got to do a little. Yeah, you nah, should. Yeah, I need un depot. 
Really, like reset my it life. cleanses you. That's what it, I need. It just like resets your energy. I feel mm. Mm. so good. Do you do yeah. yoga? I've done yoga. I I, I want I want to find a studio. It's hard because I live in Hialeah. I don't know. They, I don't think there are any good ones. I gotta look into it. You don't think there's any good uh, yoga studios in Hialeah? Yeah. What are you trying to say about Hialeah, bro? <laughs> I, I just don't think <laughs> you don't think they know yoga. The same caliber as on the beach. <laughs> you don't think so? Okay, no. The beach, man. You have the beautiful. Like, you have a beautiful side. You wake up in the morning. Beautiful weather. Wind, the breeze. Yeah, I think it's a whole different atmosphere. It's it, more expensive, it, it, it though. Is. Yeah, they go on They charge you for that. You know that, right? Well, the sunrise yoga? yoga is free. It's free. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Every time. Yeah, yeah. The sunrise yoga on Fridays at seven a.m. free. Seven a.m. is early, but yeah, <laughs> like a good time. Oh, yeah, not, bad, not a bad idea though. You can just go, scoot over there on a scooter. Yeah, get one of those little city bikes. You're gonna take pizzas on your like, on your shoulder. <laughs> I, have, I have a book bag with a whole cut out with her. Right? Like, up, a dog bag bag. Anyways, we digress. Um, uh, back to you. Back to you. <laughs> okay, I guess let's just get right into it. Let's Please. do it. Yeah, yeah. So why are you here? Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. Um, Basically, um, in October of 2021, um, I was with my ex. We were right on the cusp of making six years together. We had a house together. We had dogs together. Like it was, we had a life together. We had built a life, you know. And in October, we had a bachelor and bachelorette trip to go on. So we were both a part of a wedding party. And at the same time, I was going to Nashville and he was going to Costa Rica. And the whole time that I was in Nashville, like, I can't explain it, but I had like this deep gut feeling that something just wasn't right. And I couldn't put my finger on it. Like I couldn't really rationalize why I felt the way that I felt, but it was enough for me to know that something wasn't right. The whole time that he was in Costa Rica, we were talking, but not really talking. Like it was very touch and go we, he wasn't really checking in on where I was or what I was doing, which that in and of itself rubbed me the wrong way. Because if you're my man and we've been together for six years and this is the first trip that we're apart from each other, I would imagine that you would be concerned over my whereabouts. You know, like, what are you doing? What are What's you up going to? On? Just yeah, checking yeah. in with me, sure. normal stuff. Um, but he wasn't doing that. And the first night that we were there, it was a Friday night. He just kind of disappeared. And I remember the next day, like messaging him and being like, where were you? Like, what happened? You just stopped answering my texts. Yeah, yeah. He was like, look, we, we got really drunk and I fell asleep and whatever. And I kind of just took that at face value, but I knew something was wrong. And I decided I was like, you know what? I'm on this trip. I'm going to have the time of my life. That trip ended up being the funnest trip of my life. And it really shifted my perspective on what it means to be happy and it, it, it gave me what I was missing really in my life at that time. I wasn't really one to have a lot of friends because I built a very codependent relationship, which we'll, we'll get into. But that trip really opened my eyes to like the fact that I, in my day to day, I, I wasn't as happy as I sh could have been or should have been, you know? So at the end of that trip, I'm sitting on the plane and I'm sitting next to my friend and she tells me, she's like, oh, did you hear so-and-so broke up? And so she, she like ran me the tea. She told me the tea on this girl that we both knew that had been with her boyfriend for seven years. On the and same trip? No, no, no. This girl was another girl, okay. not on the trip, whatever. She was just telling me, catching okay. me up like okay, on okay. the achievement, okay. basically. Okay. <laughs> and so this girl that she was telling me about left her boyfriend of seven years. And I remember sitting on the plane and I was like, that's me. Like, that's about to be that's me. That's going to be me. Like, I'm going to get back from this trip and I'm going to leave him. And it was solely based on this gut feeling that something wasn't right. On the last day that I was there in Nashville, he posted a picture of me on his story. And he was like, I'm missing my princesa. And I remember looking at that and being like, it, it, it was so off from the energy he was actually giving me, like through text. That guilt. And I was mm -hmm. like this is so weird. Like I remember him, I remember seeing his story post and being like, it was so odd. So that coupled with my gut feeling, I was like, something's not right. Yeah, I'm something's out. wrong. I'm out. So when my plane lands, I walk into my apartment. I end up picking him up from the airport that night. And he like nothing. I missed you so much. I'm so happy to be home. When he touched me, I swear I, my whole, body was just telling me run like 
I, I've always been an intuitive person, but I think for the first time in my life, it was an intuition that I couldn't ignore. If I ignored it, it was a huge disservice to me as a human being. Yeah. Because what was telling me to run was something that knew something that I didn't. Like my intuition was in rooms that I wasn't in, basically delivering me a message. Like it's time to go. It's time to pack up your things and go. So the next day was a Tuesday and I told him, I'm like, Hey, I'm going to go stay at my mom's. He had no reaction. There was no, why, where are you going? What's going on? Nothing. And I knew at that point that the decision to leave was the best decision because you you don't want to be with somebody that doesn't want to fight for you or doesn't want to get down to the bottom of things or even ask you questions. That was a Tuesday. By Friday morning, he was back in Costa Rica. Again? He flew back to Costa Rica Friday morning. But were you officially broken up? No, it was just... No, so I was staying at my mom's house. (laughs) Uh (laughs) Well, that's that's why he wasn't fighting. He goes, ah, I have another chance to go back. Exactly. So we weren't weren't broken up, but I made it clear. I was like, this is not going to work for me. I'm like, you you are not what I need anymore. And I did break up with him, but... If by breaking up, you mean, did we have like a sit down conversation? Did we have like a formal breakup? Did we say like, this is the end of our road? No, that never happened. But you, you discussed that why you're leaving, like why you're, like, Wait, did he bring it up? I told him, I said, I'm going to go stay at my mom's because something doesn't feel right to me. And I need a little bit of space. And he was like, okay, Jeez. no problem. But Friday morning, he was back in Costa Rica. And that weekend, um, I ended up moving out. Sunday, I moved out. I hired movers and I moved out. <laughs> okay. Like it happened very quickly. But with nothing. With nothing. No proof, no confession. At that, no- point, at that point, him not, him not fighting for the relationship mm. was enough for me. But time, but it's been six years. So why off of it? I mean, I, I know where we're going with this, but prior to that, you made all these decisions off of nothing. So let's say he didn't do anything wrong right. and you're here picking up your shit and leaving. I wasn't happy anyway. Six years in? Yeah, six years in. I I wasn't happy anyway. And I remember like being on this trip in Nashville, like and being around other people and comparing my relationship in a way to other people. Something wasn't right. Like something wasn't right here. And so, yeah, it was six years and it happened very quickly. Like Monday I came back. Sunday I was moved out. It, It seems really quick because it is. But as most relationships are like, there's a lot that leads up to that point. And I think for me, like something was missing in that relationship that I couldn't, I was never going to get, you know, it was an emotional thing that didn't exist. So it sounds like when you embarked on this trip, you weren't in a good place to begin with. I thought I was, but the trip made me realize otherwise. What happened on the trip that made you realize that? Just the comparison of the like other Like just being happy, like just being happy, being away from him, like being give, get, having my space to 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 gain clarity over my relationship. It was a very codependent relationship, and it's difficult when you're in the weeds of that to see That's it for true. what it is. Yeah. When you finally get space, even if it's one day, two day, or a trip, it puts things in perspective for you. And me personally, like. That trip was indicative to me that he didn't care enough about my well-being because he didn't check up on me, because he ghosted me, because he wasn't answering me, because he wasn't like showing me any sort of attention that a man would. And that's that the first time that he's ever you. done that? No, looking back, it was, there were, some there were many incidents. instances. Yeah, but, of course. But just to reiterate, I think uh, this was the first trip that you guys taken apart. Separate, apart. apart. Also, because you were so on top of each other. Yeah. So maybe for the first time you weren't. Yeah. You're like, man, this is what I normally feel without this person. I feel really good. And what I failed to mention to you is Tuesday when I went to my mom's house, like he went out that night till six in the morning with a friend doing God knows what, God knows where. So me moving out Sunday was, was me saying like, this isn't right. This doesn't feel right. I don't feel like this is a safe space for me anymore. I'm going to excuse myself. And that's what I did. So the following week, we had barely any communication while he was in Costa Rica. And I had no idea what he was doing over there. Like he had mentioned to me that he wanted to go back for work. But 
something was off. Like I didn't believe what he was telling me. Mm. And that was one of the first things he said when he walked back into my apartment after I picked him up from the airport was I need, I might need to go back for work. Like that was the first thing he said. What does he do? No idea. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> So that, whole, <laughs> so, <Good> that, <laughs> so that week while he was there, like, I think I was trying to tell myself like, oh, he's probably just needs space. Like he was telling me, I just need some space. I just need some space, whatever. Saturday. So it's been a whole week. Okay. okay Saturday. Okay, okay, okay. I go out with, I, I'm out with I'm family. I'm so invested right now. <laughs> yeah. Saturday, I go out with family and, um, I'm posting on my story. I'm at a family, I'm at a family event, you know, and this is important because later he tells me that the reason he did what he did was because he saw me happy. So he thought it was okay. Okay. Mm. Right. Mind you, I'm distraught. I made the decision to leave and I made the decision to break the relationship, break up with him. But I am distraught because I haven't had a conversation. We haven't right. had a, we haven't had a real conversation. I don't know what you're doing over there. I feel like you're lying to me, but I can't prove that you're lying to me. So I was really struggling. I was just trying to make it so that like I looked okay, but I was not, I was the farthest thing okay. from okay. I also wanted to save like my grandma, my mom, my sisters, like the worry. Cause at this time they're like not really sure what's going on. And I'm trying to like not make it obvious mm. either because I don't know the answers. So I can't make it obvious that I'm going through something Cause they're going to ask me what's going on. Right. I don't know what's going on, you know? So I end up going to this event and he posts an, a picture of him holding someone's hand on his story, like on his story. Same pena. Like it's all good. Like it's all when good. When was this? When was this? This was a week later. So Saturday, that's that. That's Saturday. That you, fuck, so it? that's Saturday of the week that you moved out. No. I moved out Sunday. Right, yeah. The whole week That week, by. that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm, so yeah. that yeah. week that you moved out and then, oh, I want to yeah. stay at my mom. Yeah. 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 Post a picture of him holding a hand on his story and the hand is covered in tattoos. Like, covered in tattoos. Uh -huh. I don't know whose hand that what is. Not yours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> Not yours. Really. Not my hand. <laughs> Wait, let's just put your hands up real quick so, for, the, no, no, for no. the camera. No, ta <laughs> no <laughs> tattoos, guys. Clearly not her. Not me. <laughs> um, and that's not even the worst part. He posted yeah. a selfie and <laughs> the selfie was written. The caption for the selfie was written in Spanish. This man does not speak Spanish. Like what he speaks fuck? Spanish, but it's not like his first language. <laughs> what, what did it say? Do you so know? The, yes. Do you remember? Oh, I, I know what it says. Yeah, she, has, she has a screenshot of it. Bro. Come on, she it down. No, I actually don't. I got a new phone and uh, yeah, actually, you did have it, I don't have a single image. Okay. Actually. So what did it say? What did it say? <laughs> So it says something along the lines of, I'm so eager to live like a life of freedom. I'm happy to live the life that I want, the life that I'm meant to live, happy and in love. And then he put, the fuck? And then he put hashtag switcheroo. What? Okay. okay. Yeah. And he posted that? And he posted that. What a savage. <laughs> oh, I have so many questions. Yeah. And he posted that. And when I saw that, obviously my world just kind of like collapsed in on itself because you, you, you have an intuition that something's going on, but there's a huge part of you that doesn't want to admit Except. that there could be somebody else, that there is somebody else. Looking back, like I should have known from the jump that there was somebody else. The second that I went to my mom's house and he didn't put up a fight, but you work so hard to comfort yourself in that time that you'll do anything to avoid asking yourself like the real questions. Like, is there somebody else? Is there something going on? You know what I mean? Did he ever admit that did, did you guys ever had that conversation? He's like, yeah, that was somebody else. Or did he ever have that dialogue where you, he so, definitively said that? So when he posted that, I, I kind of like, obviously I was really upset. I was really distraught, not really understanding what was going on. And my sister was like, Hey, like, who, who is that? My sister like messaged him, him and my sister were very close. And my sister was like, who, who is that? And he sent my sister a picture of him and the girl, like sent my sister a, a photo of him and this woman. 
and the woman's covered in tattoos. Like, and my sister asked him, like, is that an escort? Like, tell me that, like, just tell me if that's an escort. And he admitted it to my sister. So eventually when I spoke to him, <laughs> I'm a maniac. <laughs> eventually when I spoke to him, like he didn't, he, he didn't care to hide that from me. Like he was like, yeah, she is. And the whole, so that was at the end of October when all that happened. Obviously I was not going back with this man. Yeah, there was no. no conversation left to be had. Like, did I want to sit down and speak with him? Yes. But for him to post that on his story and conduct himself in that way, like he had no empathy for me, no compassion for how that would affect me or my family who loved him. Like my family loved him. Like we were very close, you know, we went on many trips, like we were a family. And so I think for me, like, that seeing that seeing him go that far to post that girl and like flaunt it and then eventually post more pictures of her and talk about how he's going to move to Costa Rica for an escort. I dude. was like, That's there, was, there was no, like one night. Yeah, there, was, hooker, there, was, love. there was no <laughs> conversation to be had. Like that was it. Like that was like, that was, so I moved away. I was like, I'm, I cannot speak with you. I'm not safe with you. I'm not safe speaking to you. We, we, we cannot have a normal conversation. The whole month of November, he went back to Costa Rica another two times. He ended up getting her name tattooed. Jesus Christ, dude. He Who is this up, girl, dude? He ended up covering her, covering himself in tattoos, like hands, arms, the whole what? Nine, chest. Like, Did he have tattoos before? He had two little ones. That went all okay, off. Okay, okay, yeah, huh? Keep going. And so... <laughs> so the whole month of november like i like right before my very eyes i saw him become like a completely different person like okay. and it is probably one of the most like traumatic things to see somebody that you think you know so well so many years that you spent so many oh. years with like i'm not una guaguera like we weren't together for like four months. Like we had a house together. We had like, we had a life together. Yeah. You know, we had a future that we were building too. Like we had a business, like it was something out of a lifetime movie. I swear to where I was watching it. And I was like, I don't know who this person is. And when I saw him getting her name tattooed and when I saw the, all these <laughs> tattoos and like, I called him and I was like, look, like I'm worried about you. Like this is no longer about like how I, how you've hurt me. Now I'm worried about you because I don't think you're in the right frame of mind to like make rational things. decisions. Yeah, yeah. So then it soon became like me just worried about like his safety, who he's with, what he's doing, like what is going on, you know? And that was the whole month of November where I was like trying to piece together like my reality and like trying to make sense of like his behavior and like not having enough answers to where like I had to start answering things on my own. He tried to tell me that, he met her that Friday that we, um, the, the, when that he, he went, went back, back when he, went, he back. went back, he tried to tell me that he met her that Friday. Yeah. Right. So that he met her like after, after we broke up. Sure. But the funny thing about Apple and iPhone mm -hmm. is that you can figure out when that photo was taken. Yeah. You save it. You save it. I'll tell you exactly the date, bro. And it's like, Pro you're tip. caught, like you're caught, you know? And, I think like for him, the less information I had, the better. Yeah. Very vague. and Very vague. Very like you could believe what you want to believe type of thing, you know? Huh. And what that does to a person that's just trying to like figure out what's going on. Like you, you drive yourself crazy. Like it's, it's, it's very traumatic. It's a very traumatic situation and you can't make any sense of it. And the only person that can refuses to help you refuses to give you any sort of clarity on anything that's going on fuck dude <laughs> what what that is insane and yeah. then so that was the end so of the much to unfold right yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to like yeah. navigate so six years essentially ended right. in six days yeah right so but but i don't know where you're going with this but i want to ask you six years but then it took you a bachelor party Okay. Good. And it took you a bachelor party mm -hmm. to realize that this wasn't the guy for you. Because you had no idea about the cheating, at least concretely. Right. 
So you went on this trip and then you realized that that's where you found your happiness. But six years, why didn't you have it then? Well, no, just so, just so that we're clear, like there were a lot of things prior to this trip that were indicative to me that he was not somebody that I could trust. But one thing about him is, and this is the case for so many women, is that he was a master manipulator. And the whole six years that we were together, I was love bombed. Like I was genuinely like love bombed. Like I never had to ask for flowers or dates or vacations or gifts. Never. The week that he left to Costa Rica, he left me a note on our fridge talking about how much he loved me and how happy and grateful he was to have me in his life. So that's the thing about men like that is, you know, something's wrong and you know it for a very long time, but you're constantly reinforced this idea that they do love you and you're so special and you are everything to them. And that was what he was really good at. Like he was really good at making me believe that he loved me and that he was loyal to me. Like he never followed other women on social media. He, I, there was always transparency with our phones. Like, but, but this guy sounds like a, he it sounds like a good guy. No, it sounds like he did like a 180. No, no, no but okay, okay. This guy sounded like on paper, this on guy paper. sounds like he was great for yeah. the six years. He was great. Didn't follow yeah. other girls. Like was yeah. on honest, on top of stuff, showed yeah. you up. But but, I didn't have to ask for flowers. But what I would eventually find out is that the Costa Rican escort wasn't the first. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to get into that. It wasn't Cause I'm like, okay, the fact that this happened has to so be. quickly. Yeah. And then for you to feel that way and for him to react that way there, it could not have been the six years that this was the only. No. Yeah, clearly. No. I saw that. I, no, I was feeling all. that. I was like, no, at all. And well, all those, uh, and all those gifts yeah, and all yeah. those, all those notes and guilt all those dates like and all those vacations. Those are, those are guilt gifts. Those are, those are right. gifts given to com compensate for the guilt that they're feeling. So if I can put a smile Damn. on your face Ooh. and I can do this beautiful date yeah. for you, I feel better about what I'm doing behind your back. I think it's also about, I don't even think it's about you. It's about, he has to feel it for himself. He has to feel it like for I himself. Like I have to just, I'm, I'm, I'm a good guy. Yeah, I'm a, think, good, I'm I a think good guy. I think deep down, everybody wants to think that they're a good guy. It's guilt just, trips. Yeah. <laughs> Essentially. Yeah. It just, All I these think, things are guilt stuff. Yeah, exactly. I think people have to, they want to tell themselves that they're good. Yeah. And, and, um, but giving you those gifts, he's like, man, I'm a good guy. I did this yeah. last night. But I've done all this for her. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. That's and that's, that's where that, that's where that stems from. It's like very performative. It's like what I call now, like performative love and loyalty. It's, it's a performance. It's just like, if I do this well enough, you'll believe it way past your own intuition. You'll believe what I'm showing you more than yourself. You know what I'm saying? You'll trust me more than you trust yourself, Let me ask which you. was my case. Uh -huh. And year, for years, I knew that something was wrong, but I didn't have enough in me to leave. Like I didn't have enough strength to walk away and, and, and be on my own until that trip where I was like, no, I can do this alone. Like I can live my life alone. I can move forward alone and I can figure things out. But I think it's also, and we've talked about this, the longer you're with somebody, the less likely are you to leave because it's like, man, six years and that's that, at some point, you're four years, five years, you already invested so much time. Yeah. I'm not going to walk away on a, on a hunch or I don't have concrete evidence. I didn't catch them in the act. You know, it's a story yeah, you tell yourself. But that's the thing. It's like, I, if people left sooner there would be so many more happier people in the world. Like there are so many women, like as a makeup artist that sit in my chair and I become like a therapist to them. And they tell me, they're like, I, I cannot leave unless I have the hard evidence right in front of me. Unless I have proof. I need to see the text, the DMS. I need to get the hate girly I, message. The, they uh, tell course. themselves, they tell themselves that they need all this evidence when it's like, you're not happy. Your lack of peace is enough to walk away. You don't need Who are you? all this evidence. Yes. And it's like all these women, they stay stuck in a relationship well past the time that they're happy because, well, I don't have proof. What am I going to do? Walk away? But the, you, what? My, for me, me not being happy, that was enough 
for me. Yeah. Like that was enough for but me. But that happened after six years. You weren't unhappy before. I was ha- the, I was unhappy before. You weren't happy. I was but you didn't have the strength. I didn't have the strength and also like And the proof. And also like every time I would say like, hey, something's not right, I'm not happy. Love bomb, boom, all over again. A vacation, a date, a bag, a gift. So you a bought watch. it. You're like, ah, oh, well. Yeah. And so it's like, it was like, okay, like, how can I walk away from this man who planned this beautiful vacation where there's roses on the bed and there's this, that, the other? Like, he loves me. So my intuition is wrong. I'm just being insecure. I'm the problem. Let me ask you a question, Doug. Do you think, and I'm going to ask both of you, do you think a man like that is better than a, like a, a guy who can't do anything they can't support can't do it like he's a good guy no he's loyal no. but he can't do shit for you no because the thing is he was able to kind of do all these things and that kind of ties into andrew tate like a little bit because yeah. he's like yeah i can do whatever the fuck i want and all that stuff and i got money and and i can support this one and whatever but at the end of the day he's making sure that the women are happy Right. Yeah, but it's it's surface level happiness. It's not profound, deep happiness. It's not a safe space. It is all surface level. And there will come a time in your life where money doesn't matter anymore. And what you want is like real love and connection and trust with somebody. And so you can sit here and be like, would you rather have that or would you rather have a bum? And it's like, I would rather have none. I would actually rather be alone. <laughs> maybe not a bum, but would you be okay with settling? Okay, yeah, maybe. Okay. Yeah, maybe not a bum. Hook me up, hook me up. Would you be <laughs> with a guy that is mediocre, nine to five, da da da, making average income, an average Joe Schmo? Would you Can't be- do all these trips. Yeah. Can't give you all these flowers. Well, he's going to be honest. He's going to be trustworthy. Or another question. But what, why are those my only options? Or the, wait, well, no, because oh, we're wait, talking wait. about the guy that you, that you yeah, you painted a, a picture. <laughs> we're trying to just dissect that. <laughs> so listen, but yeah, to, to his point, or, or what if like, you know, he, he's doing all these things for you and all the, like, it, I don't know, would it not be enough to. No, because what, what that does, for, what that does to a person, at least what it did for me, like all these gifts and all these trips and all this, like he would tell me he loved me every day. Like, I love you so much. You're the love of my life. Like, this guy sounds every like a dream. day. Imagine. Every day, whole time cheating on I me. Have you, t- have you texted your girl to tell her you love her? <laughs> I woke up with her. She's here? No, she's not here now. She's at the gym. Oh. Okay. What like a, these other you love her this morning? This, right? this morning, no. <laughs> you see, <laughs> that, was my man over there. So yeah. now it's the question. <laughs> and the boy, he's doing his thing on the side because baby, I love you. <laughs> and yeah. you wake yeah, up with your girl next year, you're like, bitch, get the fuck out of the gym. What that does, what that does to you is like it makes you question your entire reality. It's like if yeah, I'm that's the scary in, part. Yeah, that's the scary part. Like. For me, like him cheating on me with an escort and wife, trying to wife her up and getting her name tattooed, this, that, the other, like that hurt me so much less than coming to terms with the fact that like my reality wasn't real. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it You've wasn't, been living a lie I was living, time. I was living a lie. Like I was literally living a lie and I felt like a puppet and he had the strings and he was pulling the strings. You know what I mean? And it came at a point where like he was doing all this behind my back because in his mind, I was never going to leave. I would probably still be in that relationship today had I not walked away, to be honest with you. And it took... Okay, let's go come back a little bit. Why did it take the trip for you to realize that? Because it was the first time that I was away from him and I was comparing like my situation with other women that were on the trip too and seeing their boyfriends like check in with them and 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 talk to them and versus mine that disappeared and ghosted me and like was barely there and like not checking in on me like something wasn't right because I was comparing how he was treating me on this trip versus how he treated me every day and I was like there's a lie like there's a lie something's off yeah like there's something off like on our day-to-day you're so concerned with me but now that we're away from each other you're in another planet. So that to me, that to me, what that communicated to me was that if I was out of sight, I was out of mind. Pero, you had told me you've been, like there's other moments that you weren't happy in those of six course. years. Oh so then what happened then? Well, he she was, was saying, he, she was saying, he would like just throw stuff. Yeah. And then it, it throw, it would, you would throw, yeah, it would like throw you off. The, oh, the, so then, I'm, so, I'm sorry. So then it sounds like this time he didn't follow up with. Right. I think something clicked, like something just clicked. Yeah, because the thing is, there was no like real guilt that like trip that he's like, baby, here, I love you here. Like, oh, you're the. Yeah, yeah. 
Interesting. Damn, yeah. dude. Yeah. It's just crazy what like one situation can do to to change your the the, the your whole life, the direction of your yeah, life. Yeah, and going. it it changed the trajectory of my life, mm. but like for the better. Like I I feel like I wouldn't be who I am today had it not been for that experience. And so while I would never really say like, hey, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I do have, I am thankful really in, in, in like a much bigger sense. Like I'm very thankful because it taught me so much and it allowed me to move away from these relationships that aren't, they're, they're, they're not real. And now when I go to establish another relationship, like what I'm looking for is so much more like profound and deep than anything I ever experienced before because of what I've been able to learn from that. So, so let me ask you, how does somebody walk away from six years that you spend with somebody? Like, what was, what was that like? Before that, how old are you? I'm 26. Okay. Damn. So, yeah. okay. Yeah. Oh, damn. You're young. You're with this guy too. Yeah. yeah we were 18 That's, turning 19. Okay. No, to your question. Yeah. So how, how does somebody walk away from a situation like that? Like such a long six years being with somebody. You're living together. You yeah, saw a real, real future. One day to the next, you're just like, no way. But I'm that's the here. thing. Like the last year that we were together, when I would think about my future, he wasn't in it. Like I couldn't, I couldn't picture that. So right. that plus the fact that something wasn't right. Like I said, that was enough to walk away. Like you can sit here and be like, how could you walk away from a six year relationship like that? But it's like, it, wasn't like it that. is a slippery slope. It is, it is like, there's a book called The Slight Edge. It's a great book. And in it, they talk about how every decision you make that leads to something big, like anything big in your life is a collective of smaller things that have occurred. Mm -hmm. So this whole Costa Rican escort uh, situation, scandal, scandal, like, and me Finish. leaving, it is a, it is, it is like, a collection of so many little things that have accumulated over time. I like that. That's a good way to look at it. Because from what it sounds of it is like you, the, the relationship was over the before year before. it was over. Uh, it was before it year, was yeah. over. <laughs> so that's why I think it made it easier for me to break up with him and walk away and, and whatever. But also like when you talk about like people that have been in long-term relationships that, that have struggled walking away, like, you really have to ask yourself, are you happy? Like, am I happy or am I just comfortable? Because I think so many people that occupy these long-term relationships, they're not happy, especially now that I'm single and I'm happy and I'm at peace. When I look at other people's relationships, I'm like, why are you still in that? Like, you can leave. There's more out there. This whole thing of like, I don't want to be single, many shit. Like, I don't think that way because I feel like, when you think that way, you're, you're, you have a scarcity mindset. You're putting yourself in a position to where like the only good guy exists are either the men that you've experienced or that's it. There's nothing else. Oh, out you there. Know. Yeah. But it's like, that's not true. That's not true. Like there are people out there that will be exactly what you need in your life and vice versa. And that is why I've said it before. You need to say yes to dates and yes to meeting people yeah. or stop being such a bitch <laughs> to people who try to approach you. Yeah. Because sometimes that asshole that you think is approaching you yeah. oh he's a dickhead or i don't like him yeah. or whatever yo just talk like a normal person yeah and stop i get so frustrated like i'm heated right now because <laughs> i hate the fact that it's like i know people i know girls that they'll have a guy come up to them and they're like fuck off I, or I have a boyfriend yeah. they don't have a boyfriend yeah. but they just tell them to fuck off yeah. <laughs> and it's like, oh yeah just listen like talk if yeah. you don't like the guy maybe he won't be your your next boyfriend but maybe right. he's the next connection to your next business venture no and not maybe only he's that, a good friend not only that but like the more you say no the less opportunities you give for yourself That's you're, what I, you're exactly your say enemy. yes yeah you're your own worst enemy you can say yes and if they don't check off a box walk away yeah. that's the thing like my in my and what I learned about myself in that relationship is that it was very codependent. He had been pushing my boundaries from the beginning, like from the beginning. When I go back all the way to the first day, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like there were so many red flags. And so now like in my healing journey, I strive to perfect my secure attachment style so that I can go out on these dates and not put so much stock and investment in men. I don't know. Like I hear women and they're like, Oh, they went out on two dates and they're like, this could be my next husband. And it's like, you don't know that. <laughs> and what, what happens yeah, is when good. you, when you do that, when you, when you meet a new guy and you're like, oh, he could be the one, like, 
I, I could see it and you don't know anything about him. By the time the red flags start popping up, you've already invested this idea. Yeah. In yeah, this person. image so that they are. So you don't want to walk away. And you, you start overlooking those red flags. You start looking, overlooking those red flags because this is the first guy that planned a date for you or took you out or he actually listens to you. But it's like, yeah, but he's, there's so many things that are going on, but you are turning a blind eye. So now, like now in my journey of like healing and knowing that I was codependent, like that's what I'm trying yeah. to move away from as I date. And when I go out on these dates, I look at it as an experience, not a relationship or a potential for a relationship. It's an experience. Like some people come into your life and they really teach you a lot. And my ex did terrible things to me. Absolutely. Things I didn't deserve, things I would never like do to anybody else, but it was such a huge learning lesson. And it allowed me to look within and think and take accountability. Like, look, I didn't deserve what he did to me, but I have to take accountability for my role in that relationship too. You know, like things that I overlooked, codependency things, like patterns that I participated in, like things that are also on me to change. And that's a huge part of healing is taking accountability. Mm -hmm. Like you're not perfect. You're not, not at fault. Like, yeah, your man cheated on you and did this, that, the other, but there were a lot of things that you could have done differently as well, or ways that you could have protected yourself and you didn't because you are codependent. So how are you going to work on that now? How are you going to be better? You know? And that's what I'm working on now yeah. is like not being so codependent and not having such an anxious attachment to people. And another thing is, is like not looking to somebody else to make me happy. That's such a common theme nowadays. I was dating this guy for two months. Great guy. Like I really do have good luck now. <laughs> with dating where like I do date good people but that's also because you're a better person 100% better person but also you're not willing to fall for he he just asked me out on a date yeah. and he did yeah. this like yeah bare, you yeah, know your stuff yeah like that's the bare minimum like yeah, the bar um, is this low and yeah, it's like, like oh yeah he does this and you know what it is it's like <laughs> my next husband <laughs> yeah because he took you on because he, he made me on a, a date yeah. because he made a reservation him. no because he made a reservation girl like, we're gonna get married before, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's the bare minimum but like I do think that I attract better people because I feel better about myself and yeah. I love myself so much more so. but I was dating a guy and, and he was a great guy, like checked off all the boxes. Wonderful. But he had a very anxious attachment style, wow. like very. And I had to make the decision to say like, look, this isn't going to work for me because when you are with somebody that is anxiously attached, it does affect you. Yeah, like they say, they're like, it, it, and they say they're like, yeah. oh, like if you're anxiously attached, like a secure person is better for you because they can reinforce, you know, whatever. But like for me that I am a secure attachment, I yeah. cannot spend my life trying to like comfort you and like let you know that I like, it's no. not your job. Not your job. Not not your job. And what, ends your job. what ends up happening is that <laughs> that anxious attachment rubs on you yeah. then you become anxiously attached and then before you know it, you have a codependent relationship. Yeah, I get anxiety yeah. just fucking dealing with your anxiety at this point. <laughs> exactly. It's like a fucking cancer. Yeah, you know, like an affection. Yeah. An affection. But, but that's, that's one thing I've worked on is like really finding happiness with myself and being able to stand on my 10 toes and being like, I'm happy. And anybody that comes into my life just adds to that. It's not like the sole purpose for my happiness, which was a huge thing about taking accountability with my past relationship. Like he was my happiness, you know, yeah. which yeah. is why he had so much free range to do all this behind my back because in his mind, I wasn't going to go anywhere. Where was I going to go? You know? Damn, I, I listened to you and, and it's so frustrating because there must be so many women out there yeah. Oh, yeah. in the same scenario that you were in and they look for ways to justify their relationship. But Ogonio, like you said it, like you're not even happy. You're not even happy. Yeah, you're finding like justifications to stay with this guy because of the bare minimum. But it's yeah, like. And he's disrespecting you. Like he's disrespecting you in front of your face and you are staying because oh, you know what it is with women. And this is such a common theme that I've learned. Women tend to hold on to a big part of their ego that says, I've invested so much in this man. I cannot walk away. Like how many women have you heard that say like, I made him a man and now I'm going to let him go and be a man for somebody else. Yeah. I build him like, up. 
that's not how I made him. Yeah, like I made him. He said that I because look, of me. And I have every reason, <laughs> but I have every reason to subscribe to that belief too. Because when I met my ex, he had a suspended license, no job, nothing. By the time I, I left know. him, we had an apartment in Midtown, this, that, the other. Yeah, but at the same you know? time, it sounds like you came into his life at the moment to do all that for him. Yeah. But that was never really him. Okay, the minute that you... Well, the week that she fucking left, the spiraled. guy has tats on his hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know what it is to get a fucking hand tat? I know. Can you imagine getting it? You, you look like you were wearing a hand tat. Uh, yeah, I'll get some. Coffee break up logo, I guess. So. You get a coffee break up logo on your fucking this. <laughs> no, but for real, no. Bullshit aside, though. Yeah. But okay, yeah, at the end I of the think, day, and I think that, like, in the in the breakup, he had he he acted with hate in his heart. Like a lot of the things that he did, like he wanted to hurt me. He really did. Like the things he was saying, the way he was talking to me, the posting this, that, the other. Like, but and why? I think it was be because I think that I I think he resented me because. In my life, he had to show up a certain way. For my family, he had to show up a certain way. Like, I had to, I, he had to be a, a, out, like an, a good person on the outside. No, I, know what it was. I know what it is. When in reality, like, that's not who he is. I think I know what it was. I think that when you finally said, I'm going to stay at my mom's or whatever, he's like, you know what? I do have this side piece and I'm going to show this bitch that I don't need her. Yeah. You know, so now I'm, I'm going to fall into this life. Yeah. He got invested and he started doing stupid shit, but all to just piss you off Yeah, is what it sounds like. Yeah. To but, show you that I'm like, I don't need you. But this is a huge part of healing. Like when that happens to you in the moment, it feels so personal, but that has nothing to do with me. Like all the things that he did, like, yeah, they were directed towards me and yes, he wanted to hurt me, but I could not take that personally because it is very clear to me that there was a lot of other things going on within him, like inside of him, you know, that had absolutely nothing to do with who I am. The thing is that like when you, when you participate in a relationship, long-term, short-term, whatever, and you do it loyally and you do it with your whole heart, you can walk away and say like, I gave this relationship everything, yeah. which is how I felt. Yeah. Like, I walked away from that I relationship. Did I, did I, could. I love you so yeah, much. Awesome. You're awesome. amazing. You want to sit on this chair? <laughs> He's like, I, walk, uh, I walked away from that relationship knowing that I gave it everything, like everything I possibly could. I have no regrets. Yeah. So everything that happened afterwards, all these things he was doing to me, all the horrible things he was saying to me, all like everything that he was doing, how could I take that personal? If I had cheated on him, if I had done all these nasty things to him, him being nasty towards me, it's a way of getting even. Yeah. Like you're just trying to get even with me. I get it. I respect it. But hmm. that wasn't the case. So clearly something's going on within you that you need to address. And you're using me as a way to express that. I had to walk away and say, this just doesn't work for me anymore. And then that's when I really had to commit to no contact, which is like the number one way to get over somebody and move on from a situation is going completely no contact, zero. I concur. Nothing. And I blocked him everywhere. Like anywhere I could block him, I blocked him. <laughs> You guys read my book because I wrote about the same thing. I was like, dude, when you that's when you all somebody, I preach. Yeah, I, I read that yeah. in your book, and they'll try. I'm on the same and thing, they, and they will try. He tried <laughs> that, everything. Yeah. The cash app request. He <laughs> tried <laughs> one dollar. <laughs> hey, unblock me. He <laughs> tried it. That. He <laughs> tried it all. All uh, email, yeah. email, uh, fake numbers, money. fake texts, fake calls, no caller ID, unknown number, anything, a fake Instagrams. Like he made like 10 different things. He's going to book like an appointment with, <laughs> with you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> like a new, new client. Eh? <laughs> yeah. But, but you, and that's another thing. Like when you make the decision to walk away, like it has to be, it has to, it has to be permanent. It has, has to, to be, be definitive. definitive. Like yeah. when you decide to walk away, walk away, grab your dignity and walk away. That's it. And for me, that's what I had to do. Like I had to walk away. The peace that I have right now is worth everything that I lost or everything that I think I lost. And I cannot hold on to what could have been, oh, but I made him a man and he's going to be a man to somebody else. No, that has nothing to do with me anymore. 
If you had to really quick look into the camera and talk to all these women out in the world and say that again directly to them, what would be the best way? Because one of the things that I've that I, I I heard from you is, you know, I try to justify or you know, then he love bombed me, but oh, but I need definitive proof. Mm-hmm. I did it. I'm not happy, but I need definitive proof. But it's like happy you're not happy you're not happy what do you need proof for you're not even happy you're not happy so i want you to pretty much give like a disclaimer to people and say hey like if you're not happy like directly from you how to like tell girls out there hey if this is going on get the fuck out yeah I, i would say lack of peace is enough to pack your bags and get out that's it that's it If you need proof, it's because a part of your mind already believes that they're capable of it to begin with. That's enough. Fuck. That's a snippet. (laughs) That's enough. Like that is enough. And he's, he's in another relationship and I'm sure. With the, with the escort? No, if you can believe it. The escort and him didn't last. Oh no, God, I would have never what? thought. I, thought, I thought they were, you know. I thought we were gonna <laughs> <be right. laughs> no, but but he's in another. He's in another relationship, and, and wait, wait, wait. What's up with these cameras, though? Yeah, no, I think they've been on so long. They were working. No, no way. Damn, dude. Yo, I love you. You're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> You're awesome. See, I'm more like. No, yeah. Play with the cables. Kind of j- jiggle the cables. It's hot in here. Is it hot in here? Is it just me? <laughs> I think it's it the is light. a little. Oh, oh yeah, it is a little bit hot. Oh, yeah, bring me another fucking. Salsa. <laughs> you have to get into high noons. No, he. You know what he I'm likes? Uh, have you had a happy dads? No, but I've heard you, of them. They you have, have happy a, dads. They have a great marketing campaign. Like they're insane. Because they're they're, they're with the. Uh, oh, the cameras are up. But you have happy dads or no? <laughs> no. Sorry, I'm yelling at that. Yeah. It's okay. No, I'm okay. Thank you. No, she needs a happy dad machine. No, I have to work later. Oh, and honestly, I, I'm, I'm trying to reserve my my uh, soberness because I have to go out tonight against my will. And <laughs> I would rather just save it for later. And that honestly, like I'm, I'm trying to not drink so much. I'm really, I'm really trying. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> 10 a.m. <laughs> Any haves. Oh, you too. You're joining the party, bro. Saturday, I'm off. Wrapping this up. Alex, thank you so much. Sorry about that. Alex? Oh, her. I thought you were talking about our editor. Oh, no. Our <laughs> editor is Alex. Too. Well, Alex, Alex I'm sorry. sorry too. Also. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to cut this shit out. No, no. I think this is all good. Fuck it. Well, we're still talking. Yeah. Um, man, I, I love that you took something really, really terrible that happened to you. And you said, this is not going to define the rest of my life. I'm going to make the best out of the situation. Yeah. I'm going to be a better person for myself, people around me. But most importantly, I'm going to persevere. Yeah. Because there's a million of other people who would have been like, this happened to me. Fuck all guys. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to be a bitch. I'm going to do this. Or this. be a hoe. Be a hoe. You know, and then do I all kinds of shit. Which, you know, whatever. I have, but, look, I have, a lot of, I have a lot of empathy for people that do get out of a really hard breakup and then they just have a really hard time where like they have really self-destructive behavior (sighs) and they, and they do things that they end up waking up in the morning and they really regret. Like I have a lot of empathy for people like that because it is not easy. Like when I went through my breakup, I, I held myself together with a lot of grace. I really do. That's one thing. And you never regret taking the high road, but I was distraught. Like my whole world ended because I ended it. I decided I did, but what I couldn't get past for a long time was his inability to end the relationship with respect, with honor, with integrity and give our relationship like the ending that it deserved, you know, like, Uh, and, and, and honor, like honor, honor the relationships in your life. Like, especially when they end, because the way that they end is everything. And for me moving forward, like, I didn't have a lot of self-destructive behavior. I really didn't. I went out a lot, but like I didn't do things that I regret at all, but I definitely had to move past what I thought it could have been or how it could have ended because it kept me stuck in a place that was never going to benefit me further. That's how I felt for a very long time. Yeah, but don't you feel like you could have also like done that? 
I tried. I I did. I tried. Like the week before he left back to Costa Rica, like Tuesday to, to Thursday, basically, while I was staying with my mom. Like I did. I tried. I tried to have a conversation with him. I remember Thursday going back to the apartment and waiting for him to like come back around to just sit and talk and and just like let's acknowledge what's going on. Like let's acknowledge that this relationship is ending. And he went shopping. <laughs> cold bastard <laughs> he went shopping and he was like i can't do this right now i have to go shopping and then while i was still in the apartment attempting to have that conversation he was packing and i was like where are you going he was like i'm going back that's how that for happens work. for work so i i did try to i did and even after like even after he came back and i knew of the girl and i knew that he was already involved in something else i still tried but you have to understand that like cheaters, especially like that, where they're very like callous and they they don't care how it affects you. They have no empathy, no compassion. The last thing they want to do is sit down and validate your experience. It doesn't matter to them. They don't care. So I had to tell myself like all the actions that he did to me was enough closure for me. Like there's this saying that they say, like the disrespect is the closure. That's the truth. Like there's no conversation left to be had once they decide that you're not even valuable of a conversation. In his eyes, like I wasn't worthy of that. Like just get over it. Like literally, just get over it. I, is kind of his attitude towards yeah, me. Yeah, I, th I think closure is it's all within yourself. Like and I, closure I is a myth, and closure is a myth. This whole idea, like oh, we need closure, we need closure. Like when you're Closure is not a myth when it's a good man and a good woman and you're just going your separate ways. And you, But when you're dealing with somebody that hates you and resents you and is acting that way towards you, like there is no closure to be had. You I, have to give it to I yourself. Just, I disagree. Well, yes, that, that I combat part. that as well. Yeah. I, I think closure in itself is some, it's a natural instinct that we need in order to kind of move on and kind of rationalize certain things. And so I don't think closure is a myth, but I do think closure from other people is a myth. In my case, in my case, I had to close that door. But that was, you were you your, had you to close had, that. Door. You were your closure. Yeah, I was that doesn't. Closure. Yes, but that doesn't Yo, mean we're so in sync right now, bro. <laughs> yeah. We gotta come to more hungover to a more hungover. Yeah, yeah. Things. Next time, I'm not so drunk. Next time, start drinking. Um, but you have to, and I realized that the, the, I learned that the hard way as well, and I feel like probably you too because. If you want to look for closure for other people, you, you're never going to find it because yeah. there's going to be people like your ex, like other people that, that can't give you that. Yeah. They can't be that. They that can't. You have to be your own yeah. shepherd. What you just said, it's true. It's you need closure within yourself. So you, what you just said earlier, oh, well, I, I'm not happy, but I don't have proof. Mm -hmm. Bitch, you don't need proof. And You're not happy. Yeah. Same thing is with closure. You don't need to speak with this man. You don't need anything from him. Nothing. The closure is with you. What do you need? You're not happy. Figure it out yourself. And it's kind of frustrating because sometimes you're like, well, I want to just understand. Bitch, you already had the answer, yeah. which is what you said. Exactly. So it's like, there's nothing else to look forward to. Mm -hmm. I think that closure is like, I want to speak to him. I want to understand why he did this. You yeah. want to rationalize it. You want it to make <laughs> sense. So that, But that, some, some behavior is irrational. Like his behavior was irrational and sometimes it won't make sense it won't, it won't make, sense. make sense to you it won't make sense to me because motherfucker wants to lie mm -hmm. so it'll never make sense because no. he's never gonna fucking explain it to you but yeah. if i spent six years with somebody and they fucked me over i want to know you know it's hard it's hard to just be like well they fucked up that's it this is it so that's kind of where that that mentality comes yeah from. I but need you to know understand. what now looking it's back that, yeah. now looking back now looking back yeah. and and being in a completely different headspace and being who i am i see it i see it um him not providing that closure was a huge favor to me yeah. because it allowed me to look within and it allowed me to get closer to myself to find those answers anyway. And it allowed me to further build the trust within myself. So it did me a favor. And there's so many people out there who, who don't realize that they have to be their own closure yeah. instead of looking for, for that somebody else to find that. And be that. Yes. Yeah. And that's what I love because everyone's always holding on to something or looking yeah. for an excuse to hold on or yeah. looking for an excuse to justify is what we're yeah. saying. And the fact that you said, Oi, this is enough closure for me. Like yeah. I don't, I don't need more closure. I already have the answers. I don't yep. need to fight for something. And sometimes like, sometimes it gets to a point where the disrespect is so loud that it's no longer about how you feel about this person. It's no longer about the time that you spent. 
It's no longer about the, the good times that you shared. It's about respect. And sometimes you have to look at your situation from a logical point of view and think, I am no longer being respected and valued. I need to walk away. I cannot focus anymore about the love that I have for this person. The time we shared, like that's irrelevant. I need to pick up my dignity and walk away. And that's what I had to do too. Like it was no longer about, oh, but he, he, he still cares about me. And look, he's made all these fake Instagrams mm-hmm, he and he's did. still watching my stories and he's still texting me and he's still calling me on no call. He's still ID. trying. He must, he's still trying. He must yeah. still care. No, it's bullshit. You had a chance and you blew it. And now I get to walk away knowing that I gave him my all. I have no regrets. I'm out. That's it. Who are you, dude? Okay. I'm Wait, I'm 26 yeah. years old. Like I'm yeah. telling you, it, it was a, such a blessing in disguise for me. It really but was. But those experience, those those hardships, they they mat- help you mature and help you learn. Look Absolutely. at her, how she is. This is Absolutely. exactly what our mission is. Yeah. It, and it's to, it's to, to spread that. Yeah. It's the fact that it's like, oh, yeah, like you're only in control of what you can do, not what anybody else is. Yeah. And it, all that other noise that's out there, Sometimes it's just, it's just that it's just noise. It's just noise. So you have to just kind of like silence that and be like, all right, what position am I in? What am I dealing with? What am I accepting? What am I okay with? Yeah. And in a, in, in, in a perfect scenario, would I even, would I be okay? Or another scenario is, would I allow my friend, my best friend Mm -hmm. to be in this situation? Mm -hmm. Would I allow them? Would I, would I say, oh yeah, this is okay. This is fine. And most of the time, and I think I saw a video about that. It's like, oh, when you're going through it, it's like you look for answers. Oh, you don't know, but he does this. But if your friend told you the same thing, you'd be like, bitch, get the fuck out yeah. of there. Well, and also like, <laughs> I I am this person now for sure. But like, I'm also, we were talking about horoscopes. I'm a really uh, big, I'm wait, a really. Big, <laughs> <laughs> cut this shit off. Yeah, Alex, and look, and look, right look, look, I'm not, I'm not a big into horoscope, but like I am a Capricorn and I know about Capricorns because I'm, I'm a Capricorn. Pokemon. And one, one thing about me, one thing about me. Pokemon? Yeah. A Capricorn? Capricorn. Go ahead. Okay. One thing about me is like through the disrespect that he was giving me, I got the ick. I was like, ill. Yeah. I was like, I am such a good woman and i'm such a good person and i love so well that like the fact that you don't want to fix and pursue me but you're willing to pursue a stranger really a stranger yeah that's true i'm like ill you don't know the value of anything like and we talked about (laughs) it the other day like this guy invested so much time and so much emotion with you for six years and he just threw it down the drain for you know an escort and also and that was another reason why i had to walk away because i was like we are not we do not value the same thing like we are just worlds apart worlds apart and i was like there's nothing to talk about further there's nothing to fix when we are so completely on like a different page you know like if if he it wouldn't have made it any easier if he had cheated on me with like another girl like like me But it would have made more sense compared to like when you compare it to like the life that he was aligned to for so long. So it's like if Mm -hmm. it was so easy for you to do that in the way that you did it and with who you did it with, you don't you yourself don't honor your own life and the time that you've put into your own life. Yeah. You know, and that is a huge reflection on at that time, his value of self-respect, which was none because a person that has self-respect respects what they put their time and energy into even if they no longer want to participate in it and so for him to just get up and go and do what he did it's like you don't even value the life that you've been living let and alone you've been mine bu- you built let alone mine like yeah. you built this life just as much as i did and it was so easy for you to get up and go like that and it's like how are you how how how, are you, how did you how did you not honor the life that you had, like, it just makes no sense to me. And so that was another reason why, like, I had to walk away and I, and I couldn't take it personal. Like something was going on there, had nothing to do with me. It was safer for me to walk away. But like, that's a huge thing. Like you need to, one thing that it really taught me was the value of time. I don't regret the time that I spent in that relationship. I don't look back and think, my God, I should have left years before I left. Or six years is such a long time. I wasted so much time. Like, I don't look back on it like that. I look back on it and think like I needed that. It was what made me who I am today. And now I, the value that I have of time is so precious to me. So 
or the people that I do give my time to, it, it's it's worth more. It's a very, very rare thing to do, be able to do, look at something that was traumatic and, and, and where you can be like, oh, I wish I would have done this. That's yeah. the common trait. Yeah. I wish I would have walked out of there years That's ago. That's all ego though. That's all ego. That's your ego telling you like, oh, you, you could have done it better. Like it, it's all ego. That's all that is. And when you drop that and you really get down to the, to, to the root of it all, like it was your life. You lived it. You learned from it and you move on. That's it. I think people, I'm sorry. No, no, I think no, people no. Are, are, are too fixated on being in control yeah. of things, mm -hmm. of everything. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you, that's why I kind of hopped up a little bit. Because ego is so important because then we kind of want to take responsibility for everything. For everything. Like I, like There's I There's certain things that you can't, you know, and sometimes you just have to let it, you know, and then yeah. by letting it, you now you understand yeah. like, coño, what am I doing And here? you live such a better life because you don't carry that burden on you. Like, and Your responsibility. You, yeah. And when you come to terms that like people are just doing the best they can, even when it sucks, like, even when your best is terrible, that's the best you can do. That is the, the, the length at which you can possibly go to. Mm. You learn to, to let it go. You learn to let the idea of control go. Like people are just trying to do like at that time, I'm sure he thought that was the best decision in the world. <laughs> like in his mind, that was the best thing for him. I cannot hold that against him. You know, did it hurt? Yeah. Did I, was I angry for a really long time? I was. But now I look back and I think, you know, you were just doing the best you could. Yeah. And I can't hold that against you. That's yeah. on you. That's your choice. Nah, you're, you're a very wise person. Like in terms of... <laughs> Are you, dude? I've also read a lot too. I, the reading I can helps. see that. The but but the fact that you're able to <laughs> accept your emotions, yeah. remove that the equation out of that and, and accept what was, what what is, and what... Could have never happened any other way, other way. Like you are who you are because of those experiences, and those experiences shape you and shape all of us. To say, oh, I wish this, this didn't happen, or this would have ended earlier, is to say, oh, I, I wish I wasn't the person that I am today. Exactly. That's essentially, what it is. Exactly. You have to be able to live with who you are today, and it sounds like you mean not. It doesn't sound like it is that you, you, you fucking you're great. You're doing great, and uh, I'm proud of you. Kudos to you. Thank you. To overcome Super. something. Yeah. No, I'm, I mean, no. I'm completely blown away. But I think it's like, it's a testament to like, you, you can heal. Like yeah. you can heal. Like when I was in the thick of it, I did not see a way out. I, I couldn't, I was like, I'm, I'm so tired of crying. Like I can't cry anymore. Like I, I actually cannot do this anymore, but I, I, you have to commit yourself to really moving on and closing the door. Like that whole thing of like, I'm not going to block him. Cause I want him to see how I'm doing. Why? Fuck that, dude. Like, yeah, dude, like why? Yeah. Why do you care? He had the opportunity to see you IRL, like in real life, yeah. <laughs> every day, and and he blew it. You think he cares that you're looking good, going out, you're with friends? No. Like, I wish women could get past that whole thing of like, like uh, what I heard a lot of people tell me when I was healing was he's gonna regret it. He's gonna regret it. He's going to regret it. He's going to regret it. Against and at the time it fed my ego yeah. because it helped me. It was like, yeah, he is going to regret it. And he did lose, lose a good girl. But what does it matter to me if he regrets it or if he doesn't? It has nothing to do with me anymore. And the only way that you can heal is by like releasing that, letting it go, block them, move on. Put your best foot forward and start showing up for yourself every day. Focus on you. Focus on you. Instead of focusing on what Focus he's going to say. You know, what got, you know what got me to stop crying? Uh, if you can believe it. I literally looked myself in the mirror and I was like, you are not rich enough to cry. <laughs> you are not rich enough to cry. I'm like, the day that you have your own bag, your house on a hill and you're living your life and you're traveling the world, then you can cry. Yeah. But for now, that's it. Enough is enough. Yeah, no more. I was like, I need to focus on me. And that's when I got my gym membership, started going to the gym four times a week, uh, yeah, you know, like reading, you, hey. reading. Now my self care is at an all time high that my mom's like, you have to come to this, to this thing. And I'm like, no, I want to stay home. It's like, what are you going to do? I'm like, I'm going to read. She's like, Alexandra, you need to come to this. You need to come. And I'm like, no, I need to put myself first. And she's like, I, like they don't get it you know like they don't get it but once you get into like that routine of like really loving yourself and like showing up for yourself and like having these really amazing healthy habits other people will look at you and like not understand it but you have to do it for you 
that's where I'm at right now. But this this is my feedback to you, my 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 encouragement. The feeling that you feel now, never let go of that. No. Never find yourself in another relationship and then like yeah. I'm gonna like do things that you're doing now, continue to do those things. Oh yeah. Throughout relationships, whoever you meet, whatever. Never lose yourself. Exactly. Never. And that is one thing I can tell you. I, I like the honest to God truth, that is one thing that I will never lose. I will never lose myself in another relationship but that's also because you you now understand who you are absolutely and a lot of people just like you said single like i could have gotten into a rebound relationship you know how easy Uh, that would have been for me to get the words out of my mouth for me to get into a rebound relationship a month later a man that loves me shows me this that the other it would have been so much easier because it's a distraction i'm getting my ego fed every day my feelings of validation are going through the roof because somebody is giving it to me. But that's the what thing. my ex couldn't do. What, right, what my ex whatever. couldn't do or whatever. Or just like post another man to make my ex jealous. Sure, you know what sure, I mean? Like sure, that type sure. of behavior. But what does that do for you really? Like it's not sustainable. You never heal. You just build codependent relationship on top of codependent relationship. Yeah. All you do is just live in this cycle that never, ever ends. And I had to, I had to be single. Like I had to be single and I had the opportunity a rebound relationship because it's true. It's, I saw something the other day of this girl that she was like, I was single. And like the next day, like I had like 10 guys, like hit me up. People wait on the sidelines. Like that's a real thing. That is a real thing that these men just wait for their, for that girl's man to fuck up so that they can just, you know? And so that was the case for me. Like I had people reaching out to me, like wanting to take me out. And I was like, I can't do this. Like, I really, really need to focus on it. First of all, you don't want to go on a date with me because I'm a mess. I am a mess. <laughs> I won't be a good time. But the best thing I did was really commit myself to being single. Like yeah. for real, like really doing it. You committed yourself to committed, yourself. Committed myself to myself. It's so rare to see that. There do I say more rare for women. I feel like because they have so many more options. Yeah. You know, for a guy, you're single. You got to put in the work or whatever. For a girl, you're still <laughs> fucking... Turn on, open up your phone. Yeah. Yeah. Just and, delete all your ex's pictures and that's yeah, it. And that's it. Wait <laughs> five minutes. Yeah. So for you to say, listen, that I'm going to do this and you know, you're a young, attractive woman and you probably, yeah, again, you were really saying you could have been with anybody right after. And it would have made those first couple of weeks and months a lot easier. Okay. That's distraction. I'm with somebody. Mm-hmm. Da, 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 da. But in the long run, you would have lost all that you've gained so far. Absolutely. So absolutely I'm proud of you. Absolutely. I am completely floored by you. Yeah. Like, you have no idea because... We've had people on and like every single time people like reach out to us for your, for, for advice. It's this, like, this is what it is. It's like, it's not worrying about that shit. It's like, why? Like, why are you so invested in like, yeah. what about you? Have you invested in yourself? No, oh, cause it's, it's like, dude, that's what it is. So you're here justifying, looking for excuses or like, no, it's like, it's you. Yeah. And you owe it to yourself to, to really work on you and be better for you because the world is a mirror and a lot of the people that you meet are a reflection of you or a reflection of parts of you that you don't want to heal or address and so that's why like you ever meet somebody that is always in the same type of relationship always over and over again and you're like and it's the same guy just in a different body (laughs) and it's because you are not you're not focused on you you're not focused on healing you and being the better version of you So you're not attracting anything better, you know? And then this whole thing of like, I was saying, I was in a relationship from 18 to 26. So this whole situation ship, like, I don't know what that was. So when I became single and it was like a thing, like a situation ship or a sneaky link, I didn't know what that was. If I had been single, I would have never let that happen because I don't understand that at all in any capacity. And I think it debilitates so many women from actually finding good partners because they settle for these like stupid relationships. Like just they're, they're stupid. They don't mean anything in the long run. Like, do you really see yourself growing old with that man that, that his idea of a date is getting Uber Eats? Like ask yourself. So what, what do you think, um, women should look for when they're meeting a man then? Because one of the things you said earlier was, oh, he and took- wait, to be clear, I love Uber Eats. I'm just saying in the beginning, no, no, him no, asking you to come over and Uber Eats, it's essential. I love Uber Eats, just so we're clear. No, but I'm asking because it's like, what would you tell a woman who's in a situation that, you know, who's looking to date? And the first thing that she's going to see is maybe a guy who wants to take her out on a date. And they're like, this is going to be my next husband. Yeah, don't go out on the date, but look 
look at it as an experience, not as a relationship opportunity. Like yeah. go out there and really experience other people and go out on these dates and put your best foot forward, have a good time, and then be able to walk away and say, you know what? I don't think that's for me. And just not entertain it. Move on. If I may add to that, I think when you go on a date, it's not so much about learning about the other person. I think it's very important to learn about yourself yeah. within that date. Yeah. How you react to things, how you how you learn things and accept start accepting things. Because yeah. a man can easily say, Well no, hey, let's go out on a date and it's like Whoa, he asked me out on a date. And then you go on the date and he's a fucking dickhead. Yeah. But it's like, but he asked me out on a date. Yeah. yeah and, like, and they put so much stock and, and leverage into little things like that, that really are the bare minimum, you know? So when you go out on these dates, go for the experience, experience the other person. If you like the experience, try it again. If you don't walk away, don't put so much emphasis on what it could be or what it looks like. And also like go into the, into the date and, and see if you like them. You know, there's, there's this whole thing of like going on the date and making sure they like you. Like, do they like yeah, me? Am I, yeah. doing, you know, see if you like them. That's it. That's it. And stop telling people about what happened with you and your ex and your past relationship. I cannot <laughs> tell you how many friends go out on dates, first dates or second dates. And they're talking about exes right at the table. And I'm like, that is, why are yeah, you doing that? Bueno, but that's for the other person on that date to say, you're not healed yeah, yet. Yeah, you're not healed yeah. yet. So, like, look, I'm talking about it right now. Like, what we've well, talked we're about. Here. That's we, the but, like, this is yeah. not, but this is not something that I would go into. On a date. Oh, yeah, on this, a date. Isn't, this isn't a date. Yeah, and like, it's even like, <laughs> like the guy I dated for about two months, like, he wanted to talk about exes and I was, I kept it very brief. I was like, oh, it just didn't work out because there's no need to drag the past into your present or your future, you know? So go into these dates and get to know the other person, not what you have in common from your trauma, please. But, but, <laughs> I, but, but I will say this though, I think it's important when you get to know somebody, the, the past is somewhat relevant. Their ex, that story, to what happened is somewhat relevant to way, who you are today. Yeah. So did, did it work out? It didn't work out because I wanted to get married, he didn't. Did he, it didn't work out because we we disagree with this. Well, maybe we were disagreeing with that too. So if yeah. we could disagree with that, then I think at some point you so should definitely touch upon it. But what I'm, the reason I bring it up is because I think nowadays, like people crave intimacy and they don't know how to cultivate it. So the way that they try to create intimacy with somebody that they're getting to know is by bringing up their past. Yeah. And seeing what trauma they have in common. And that, what it builds is something called trauma bonds. Sure, sure. By the time it's time for you to really walk away, it's so hard because you have a trauma bond with this person. Yeah. You know, you think that they know you, they, 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 they know what you've been through. And it's like a lot of people get cheated on. How can we move on? How can we build intimacy without focusing on our trauma? Like we don't need to do negative. that. I want to add to that because a lot of times, especially like say you're in a relationship within, you know, nine to fives, you know, and I'm a victim of a nine to five, but I'm not the only person that that's, that's in this, but you then start working with people. And let's say that, let's say you and I were to work together. I work at a bank. Let's say you work at a bank, you got hired, right? And you've been working for a couple of months or whatever, a year, whatever. So now every single day we're talking about all the bullshit we got to deal with at work. Mm -hmm. Now we're just relating. Mm -hmm. We have so much in common that we hate this job. That doesn't mean anything. Doesn't so mean a lot anything. of times, like you'll have a partner at the crib and it's like, but now I'm talking to her every day and she gets me because mm -hmm. she gets my frustration. Mm -hmm. My girl doesn't understand me because I'm at work. She doesn't understand when I open a fucking checking account and a fucking struggle. Yeah. But she does because she works with me. So now you start anything. building those essentially a trauma, trauma bond. bond. Even, yeah. at, even in, a in a situation as simple as at work. Work environment, you can yeah. create those trauma bonds. So it's, it's very delicate because you think that you're vibing with someone off of things that you don't want to vibe with them. Yeah. Those aren't things that you want to relate with people. I mean, it's nice to know maybe after a while, let's say that you're dating with someone after, cause I would want to be like, Hey, uh, now that I'm a very secure, I'd be like, I want to understand what happened to you. Like what's your past, Exactly. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but that takes some time. But if I'm off the get going to start talking about those traumas, and try to find a relationship with right it. Here. It's a red flag. That's that's a huge red flag. Yeah, be careful with that. There's no need. There's no need. You know, there's no need to create a connection off of that. Like, start trying to connect with people off of actual like compatibility. You know, like 
you you can meet somebody and they can check off a lot of boxes, but that doesn't mean that they're compatible. That doesn't mean that that's your person. That doesn't mean that that's going to be your end game. So start like for me, like when I date people, I see if if it's genuinely something that can be a connection, not so much like I'll, I'll see if you check off the boxes for sure. But it's not like I'm going to hold on to that and try and build a relationship around it. You know, I really try to see if we're compatible. What do you look for? I look at their, especially no. I look at their attachment style, which I now How? can pick up very easily. Just the way that they communicate, like, especially after, after a month or two, you're talking every day, you've gone on a few dates, like typically, like, like if you don't, if you don't reply after like three hours, ty- you're like, typically, they're, you? typically, <laughs> if you know oh, what to up. look for, they're very easy to spot, you know? And I read a book called attached. And that book Deta- really like detached. No, it's called attached. Attached. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah, it's a like really, that, really good book. Um, and it and it taught me a lot about the different styles. So now I I I can pick it up really easily. Um, I also look at like their family, like where they come from, like how how their family dynamic is. I look at how passionate they are about their life, like what they're doing, what they're pursuing. If they have Mm -hmm. like big dreams, if they have goals, like that's really something I look for. Cause I have a lot of that too. That's important to me. Um, and, and just their level of initiative, like how, 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 how present are they in their, how present are they in their own lives that they are really trying to pursue something worth pursuing? They're not really playing games and they're not, and another red flag is like when they immediately comment on your looks, like, I hate that. I hate that. Like right when they comment right on my looks, like right from the jump, I don't really like that. That's like a, a thing of mine. I don't like that. So if, they, if you're going to date, they compliment, oh, you look great. No, 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 but that's different. That's different. Like I'm saying like in the DM. Oh, you huh, know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, what, delete, like what, like what, like what? Like, like, hey, beautiful. Like, please stop. <laughs> don't like that. Decline. <laughs> Decline. But you have to think about it because on social media, that's the first thing that comes up. I don't know your personality. I see your looks. I don't know who you are. No, I, 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 I get why they do it. Right. I'm just saying I don't like it. Okay. You know? Fair point. And to that point, I think it's very important because you have kind of created your own call them boundaries. You can call them requirements, whatever you want. Sure. But in order for you to feel comfortable within yourself in any relationship that you'd be, that you'd be participating in. So let's say you go on a date but you're asking the right questions that make sense to you mm-hmm. in a partner. Mm-hmm. So obviously don't take her like direct kind of <laughs> advice, but the point is find what's important to you and then ask the right questions yeah. that are important to you to make sure that you find that compa- compatibility. Absolutely. And, and I'm a huge believer in like manifestation in the universe. Like I am a huge believer in that because yeah, it's works for me. <laughs> Whatever. Stars, yeah. my, oh my god! It's really worked for me. My moon is yeah. like a Taurus, but my fucking night. <laughs> right. That I don't know. Rising I don't know. sun. Yeah. I don't. I don't know my rising or my moon or my. Sun. I don't even I don't know, know talking shit. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know what I'm I don't know any of that. I don't know what time I was born. I do nine eleven. Oh shit! And you? Do you know what that means? I was born on nine eleven. I don't know. I'm asking you. No, I oh, I thought you did. No, 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 no. I don't know that much. I don't <laughs> anyway. know that much. Anyway, um, but I the reason I say that is because like when it comes to asking the questions and and knowing what you want, you have to stick to that. Like if you know that you want a relationship and you want a man that's X, Y, and Z, like stick to that. And any man that comes in that doesn't align with that, remove them. Like remove them because the more you entertain what's not for you, the more of that you get. And the further and further and further away you get from aligning yourself to the things that you really do want and the things that you do deserve. So what if they are X, Y, but they're not Z? So- <laughs> what, in what context? In what context? So so let's say you get a media guy, he seems great, but he doesn't. Because it, it's, it's nice to have that list, that checklist and theory. It sounds great, but not every item on the list weighs equally, right? Right. And not every item is... It's going to be very hard to find a guy that... Just give me a scenario. Yeah, bro. All right. I'm I'm, going to take you back to the scenario there that earlier that I brought up. Okay. You didn't want to avoid it. I'm going to fucking make you... (laughs) (laughs) Great guy. I thought checks off most of your list, but he does, you know, he's a a hard worker, but he has limited income. You know, let's bring it back to finances. Give me basic. Very simple. I know. Whatever. Fuck it. Oh, I got a better one. 
Like, yeah. Do that. Sure, we do that. Then he bounce up here. Okay. Does he? <laughs> does he have a really cool business idea? Is he trying to be rich? Like, does no. he want money? Does he want a comfortable life? Does he desire? What are his things? goals? Like, what are his goals? Because if he's just comfortable in that position for the rest of his life, that wouldn't work for me. What? Not because I. You keep going. Keep going. Like this guy in his phone. Not because I place that right. much value on finances and and being rich and all that but because who i am at my core is somebody that strives for a lot more and i know i'm gonna live a really big life and so that level of that level just wouldn't work for me okay so does he want more or is he just comfortable where he's what he it sounds like he's comfortable where he's at let's say he I wants like he, but, but he wants no. <laughs> <laughs> he wants more but what he wants is not he wants to be a school teacher, but he's happy. That is wonderful for him. It's not enough for me. Okay. Here you point blank. Like and again, it it money money is like the surface level for sure, but like it's more about like thinking big. Like we only have one life to live. We just have the one. So it's like there's nothing wrong with being a school teacher, especially if it's happy and it fulfills you and it's what That's you what want. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But like for me personally, like I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to own businesses. I want to own property. Like my, my mindset that's, is so far removed yeah. from that life that that just doesn't work for me. And that's okay. That doesn't make yep. me a gold digger. It doesn't make me, no, it just, it makes me know what I want. I know it doesn't align with that. And that's it. I like that. But I'm happy for the school teacher. Yeah. maybe but you'll teach your kids Let's add to I am. you have to, to live a big life you should be happy so if that makes somebody happy then that's, like that. that's good it's very I'm, I'm, but I like that you, you what you, a blessing uh, to have you here exactly but I like that you shown respect on the individual who is okay with being a school teacher yeah, because a lot of women are like that. The, men too oh this is a job of they they put them in a low hierarchy like oh they're not good enough yeah and you're saying well they are good enough but it's just not something that i want to that, that i see myself and with. That's, yeah, that's, okay. that's okay and that's okay which Perfect. is what's the most important yeah. thing and because okay. so any school teachers out here just know that you can find the woman it won't be her <laughs> it won't be her no. <laughs> won't yeah be change her. your career but, but but they're not they're not probably looking for somebody like me anyway so it, the matter yeah. that's, and that's why and that's why like compatibility is what you need to look at like so stop important. trying to make people fit uh, into your mold like when it doesn't work, it doesn't work. That's and I always, it. and I always say, but there's millions of people out there, seven billion people. I always say it. Yeah. You, I, I'm really gonna force a relationship with you. No. Like no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why? And it doesn't take anything away from and, you and or that, me. That right there, like seven billion people in the world, like that. Also, on that trip that I was on, I was like, there are seven billion people in the world. Is this really? it for me like is uh, this really my person i'm not even happy i'm with not this happy guy. Yeah. like yeah. i gotta take a risk exactly i gotta take a risk i gotta get out you know and that's so true like there are seven billion people in the world do not allow this relationship to keep you in that place and think men ain't shit so i'm just or gonna stick with I'm the worth. one i got or this is all i'm worth yeah, yeah like there's there's so much opportunity out there the world uh. is so big and the way that you speak has so much power i read this book called the four agreements and in that book, book. Hey, she, in that too? book yeah. in that I book know. they talk about the power of the tongue so when uh, you're yeah. sitting there and you're saying What's like the four, four agreements, agreements. Four agreements? Yeah. when you're sitting there and you're saying like these men are shitty like i'm never gonna find love all men cheat all men this all men that that's like you attract that's all ego that's you telling you yourself that so that you don't feel so bad about what you've been through but the fact is like you can feel bad about what you've been through and then come up from it and and change your mindset and i also think that you tell yourself that to justify that the choices that you made the man that you've dated yeah. oh they're all like Which that it's not your fault like, no look, yeah, yeah i'm not listen, saying and it's just but, like like sometimes i see like these women that are struggling as single mothers and i look uh, at the comments and the comments are like yeah but you, that's why you should be more careful with who you have a baby with like every woman every woman thinks that they're having a baby with a good man like no woman is like oh this one sucks but he's gonna be my baby <laughs> he's daddy. the one <laughs> then you know, like, yeah. but then you, you look know, at yeah. women and, and in hindsight they can look back and be like damn I, I definitely could have chosen yeah. better, oh, oh, sorry but, flag, but yeah. that's the thing. Like, it's not your fault that you got cheated on. It's not oh. your fault that your man disrespected you, but it is your fault when you stay stuck in that mindset and you don't move out, like move out of it, you know, move out of it and, 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 and 
create a life that you love. Good choice bringing her on, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I love you. Yeah. You're amazing. Yeah. Thank you. You've acquired a certain set of skills, I want to say, over the past year, I feel like. Definitely. Yes. You got probably a library at home with all those books you've been I reading. I do. <laughs> I do. Good for you. I'm so they fucking say proud. That, they say that your mentality is a certain level of currency. So if you're spending your mind on things that are, in, are like don't have value, your mind has no value. So, who are you, dude? <laughs> Read. Well, who's Start this reading. Start reading. Yeah. It no, changed I my do, mind, I and do. I wasn't a reader but, uh, before. Yeah, I wasn't. It's, it's so good. No, I'm sorry. no, well, 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 no, you no, can't no, no, go. I'm gonna ask you about the books. Okay. Yeah. No. 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 So me and my girlfriend, we just started like a book club. Oh, really? so, can yeah, I be in yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> can I be in Honestly, you shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. No, no. You, you, you. We have to keep her around. <laughs> yeah. But no. Bring you back on for sure. Yeah. We just no, started. No, but you, we gotta be friends with her. Like, yeah. <laughs> Whenever we go I'll out be, or something, I'll, be, I'll be friends with you guys. You're so awesome. Yes. Yeah. No, no, no. But anyways, yeah. uh, book club. no, no book club, especially in, well for like. We have a doctor. He recommended it. It's like, start a book club. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you started it, a book. Club? Yeah, like it's just us two, obviously. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could I be mean, a third. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we gotta start somewhere. <laughs> and it's like you know, you you read you read a chapter, the same book, and then you go over it and you. What did you understand? What did you get from this? Mm -hmm. I what love that. And that's that's a date. It's and an it's, expensive date in Miami too. <laughs> and, yeah. and, it's and a it's, date, and it's such a beautiful way to cultivate intimacy in your relationship. Like it's such a beautiful way to do because that. Because if you read a chapter and I read the same thing, how, if I understand how you interpret something, now I can get a whole other perspective of who you are yeah. and how you view things. Right. And so that's a remarkable way of to be even more intimate with somebody. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Without you know being physical. Intimate no, I that. totally agree. And it's <laughs> funny that you mentioned that because <laughs> yeah. one of the things I thought about, like now that I'm getting into reading, I'm like the next relationship I get into, I want to read together. Like yes, I a, want to read thing. together. I want to learn together. Like. That is something that I, I wrote down. I, I think learning it. something, a new thing, anything it could be with somebody. It's such a, it's such a raw experience. And yeah. that's why I love traveling with my partner so much because we, with you too, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we learn new things. Basically. We're going to travel next month together. So I'm excited. <laughs> and so that's a whole other way of getting to learn about your friends, your partners, yeah. your spouses, whatever. Because now I can see you out of your element, out of your yeah. day and night. How, how are you on this trip? Like a sleeve <laughs> or whatever. How, how are you behaving? And that's a whole other way to fall in love with somebody. Absolutely. I love yeah, that's why I love Charlie. Absolutely. I fell in love with. I fell in love with you. This guy, this guy travels all the time. So we're like, I would just show up somewhere and I don't know where the fuck I am. And he just like, all right, he just starts talking to people like, yo, where'd I go? All right, I got to go over this. Oh, what do we need? Oh, we need to go over here. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. okay, Marvin. Yeah, you yeah. just follow along. Okay, I love Marvin. traveling. So like once I get to the airport, there's a... And you and you build there. the itinerary. You're an itinerary. I build the itinerary. Guy. Yeah, Claudia's great as everyone like that too. But I, I, I love doing <laughs> Have that you stuff. been to Portugal? I have I'm, been. I've been to going. Portugal. It's Do you so have nice. any recommendations? I've only been to Lisbon. That's why. Um, but it's it's fun. I, I have a couple of spots I can write. I send it to you. Yeah. Um, it, inexpensive, great. And well, if you're just gonna spend time in Lisbon, it's great too. But it's also islands of well off. No, the coast. so I'm going to Lisbon and then I'm going to the coast. There's an the I, coast, I forget yes, the name. I forget the name, but. I'm splitting my trip in half. Have you seen? A, I'm gonna get off. Have you seen Money Heist? Yeah, I've seen. So Money a lot Heist. of the scenes were filmed on the, on some of the islands too. Oh, wow. yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, cool. it's Portugal. Sick. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know it's, that. Uh, Portugal is beautiful. Yeah, oh, we'll, we'll I'm talk about super later. excited. I'm super. It's excited. right next to Spain, right? It's right next to Spain, yeah. and you yeah. can you can hop on a flight from Barcelona to Lisbon. It's like forty dollars. Yeah, I'm <laughs> no excited. Way. Yeah, it's like a forty five minute. Flight. We should have gone to Spain for our birthday, though. In November, dude. <laughs> Too late now. We're gonna go to Iceland. And Amsterdam. Yeah, we're going to Amsterdam and Iceland. That's gonna be dope. That's gonna, and Boy, Iceland's but oh, gonna be so beautiful. It's, it's expensive. The fucking <laughs> trip. Yeah, yeah. But it's gonna be beautiful. It's gonna be dope. Iceland looks really. Yeah. Beautiful. So here, here's a problem. Though. And Amsterdam, you can smoke a lot of weed. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, drink um, drink Whoa, the absinthe. The absinthe in Amsterdam. No, that's like what, like eighty percent, eighty proof. Or yeah, but just try it. Try it. You're there. Proof. You're already there. Yeah, fuck it. You're already there. <laughs> um, I forgot what I was gonna say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. That was a huge healer for me. Weed. I smoked a lot of weed. Like oh, now, really? not so much. But can I say that? Yeah, I smoke weed every fucking day. <laughs> I smoked a lot of weed, and it and it it it, it really helped me like a lot. Because I had, a, you know, you have anxiety. And, and it like, mellows you down. No, yeah. but that and, and it made me so introspective. Like the the way that mm, my mind right. thought. Yeah. It was funny because when I was sober, like not high on weed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was very, I was very stuck in that victim mentality. When I would smoke, it was like, it pulled me out. And it allowed me to look at the situation from like a perspective that. I wouldn't have been able to mm, at that saying, time. Saying, like yeah. now I constantly live in that mindset of, of being out and looking at it that way. 
but in the in in the mess of it all and the healing of it all like i couldn't without weed and i'm not encouraging it if if you you know whatever sure, but sure, it sure, just sure. it worked for me and it really was such a big part of my healing I don't want to. I don't want to turn this podcast into like a weed uh, smoke <laughs> <side>. promoting. <laughs> Wait, but let me say the same thing. For me, like when I blaze, I'm in a different mode. Like my head, yeah, it's in another space. I'm thinking differently. Even my conversations are different. Yeah. And mind you, I mean, I, I, it, it will go to places <laughs> that I don't. I don't even know how to how to yeah. handle. I start talking about aliens and fucking the galaxies and yeah. shit. <laughs> but me too. It, have you heard of Bob Lazar? No, me and, me and Mo, don't get me started with Bob Lazar. Yeah, like, yeah he's crazy. like reverse engineer that no, he no, saw no, some crazy, aliens and knows like, yeah, not the point, not the point of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the point is, wait, Turn it into the alien break. When I, bl- no, no, when I get high, man, you talk about aliens in outer space and I'll go on a tangent. Yeah, yeah. Same, same. Pero, point is, um, it really does remove, for me at least, and I think even when we went to Amsterdam the first time, yeah. remember? Yeah. Because he used to hate smoking. Mm-hmm. And then we went to Amsterdam yeah. and I'm like, listen, it all depends on where you are, mm-hmm. who you're with, mm-hmm. and what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So he had really bad experiences before. So when we went to Amsterdam, I mean, obviously we smoked, you know, and there was a moment we were at a coffee shop. We were sitting down, uh, you know, face to face. And, you know, since we're in business together, it's fortunate that he's one of my best friends, but we're also in business. So he's sitting across from me and I'm like, tell me about your weed experience. I know you didn't like smoking weed. And he goes, it was actually very pleasant. And I'm like, exactly. Because it's just our conversations were on a different yeah. level and our minds was just rushing. In fact, when we came here with Carlos, we yeah. went outside to smoke and I started bringing up like all these ideas of like, oh, we could do this, we could do this, we could do this. Yeah. Then we came back in and then we finished everything. Yeah. Some of the stuff. It's things it like makes, that. And, and me and my job being a makeup artist, like it makes me more creative and, and the same thing. It inspires it me It just pulls me out of like, what's happening right now so for example like me how i told you that i showed up here after a happy hour just you know kind of still drunk but i'm good now <laughs> but the point is it's like my mind and my life is always running yeah the moment i smoke it's like okay yeah chris is there yeah just a, a, a body doing whatever he has to do responsibilities already on the calendar scheduled doing whatever he has mm-hmm. but now my mind is somewhere else mm-hmm. and now it's able to think about what he's doing Think about what he can do. Think of how to solve things. So if I see what's going on, like, oh, I have to run over here. I have to run over here. But it's like, okay, how can I get there more efficiently? Maybe yeah. I can join these two. Like, I just start thinking <laughs> differently. Yeah, yeah. And, and it did that for me too. Like, now I don't smoke that much, but like, it did that for me. Yeah. And it, it really, really, really helped for Good sure. for you. See, there's so many tools that you can use to kind of get over these situ- so, yeah, situations. So yeah, we're not uh, promoting weed, but... That helps. Disclaimer. 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 Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you should try. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're gonna have to start wrapping it up. Um, you think so? Okay. Getting there. Okay. 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 Yeah. I'm. I'm good. I don't know because I know you had to be somewhere, but she's got. A little I mean, bit of if time, you guys want to wrap, I have time. But if you guys okay. want to wrap up, we can wrap up. It's up to you. Okay. Um. No. 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 Okay. All right. We're good. Uh, you were saying about. Uh, the whole weed experience it helped you and now where you are are you dating somebody now no Ooh. no no Listen. i'm actually <laughs> not these, these i she, i was she, like i said i you was were. dating for two months and i i did like him and and he checked off a lot of boxes but i think in the end i just didn't see that long-term compatibility mm-hmm. okay and so no now i'm now i'm single and uh, when you told him like, "Hey, listen, I don't want really to see anything long term," is that, that, that was that a conversation or the direction of the conversation? Yeah, yeah, I was honest. Okay, I, I one like thing that. I learned about my experience was like, I will never not provide that closure for somebody else. Like, I it, it taught me a lot on how to end things with respect yeah. and like not burn your bridge. You don't have to end things in chaos. You don't have to. Like, you can actually like end it. things respectfully. You know. Um, but sometimes you could just end things without it as well. Yeah, absolutely. Like, look, if you're being disrespected, like, for example, like I have a friend that she's been like going back and forth with this guy. He's made it very clear that he does not intend on putting in the effort. Like he's made it very clear, but he still texts her and, 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 you know, drags her along and whatever. And she was about to send him this long paragraph. And I asked her, I was like, for what? What? Yeah. Like for what? What's the goal? For what? Save your breath. For what? Like sometimes. What are you going to accomplish? Sometimes the message can only be delivered in silence. That's it. I've said this before, 
And um, I'm going to say it now with you here. I had a professor that told me this, something very similar, but not really. But it's, he told me, listen, if there's something that you really want to say to somebody, if something that's really on your mind, write it down. Write it. The minute you write everything off, because right now it's in your head. Like, that's why you're texting. Like, oh, I want to fucking whatever. But once you text it or once you at least type it out and you read it, you're already taking it out of your mind. Yeah. You know, you purged mm-hmm. it from you. Yes. So he was very adamant on write things down. Write things down. Because say, let's say you and I dated and we broke up and you're a fucking bitch and I'm a fucking asshole and I fucking hate you and I want to fucking send you a long ass message. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's just writing it down because everything that I have built up in here, when you, the, the instinct is type it and send it. Mm-hmm. Call bitch. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it's, oh yeah, <laughs> write it down. <laughs> write it down. You take it on your mind. Now you, you're able to process everything. You're like, all right, one, one. Yeah, I put on another medium. And maybe that's not what I want to say, or what am I trying to accomplish yeah. by saying this? Yeah, yeah. There's nothing, and especially here. with people that don't give you the effort that you're giving them. Yeah, like a lot of the times, like let that be enough for you. Like you don't have to send that text. You don't have to get your point. Out. A man knows when they're disrespecting you. They know when they're lying to you. They know when they're not putting in the effort. They know when they're not taking you out on dates and treating you the way that you deserve. So. If they know that, why do you feel the need to make it clear to them? Oh, I, you're treating me bad. They know. They are aware. They are consciously making that decision every day. Yeah, so, we're adults too. Like, so, yeah, so, so, so some, life. yeah, so sometimes like let the silence be enough. Like just walk away. That's it. That's it. And once you, be, once you become secure in yourself, like you will be able to look at somebody not giving you the effort and be like, it's your loss. I feel bad for you. That's <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. And that's me. Like, that's how I operate. Like whenever, whenever like a man approaches me incorrectly and like wants to like half ass that, like I look at them and I'm like, that sucks for you. Like, but I'm not wasting my time. Like I, that, yeah. I, 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 I actually have the ick a little bit that you don't put yeah, in the effort, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. like, because to me, I feel like you don't know value when you see it. And I don't like that. <laughs> I tell my girl all the time. I'm like, wait, like if something were to happen where you were like to fuck up or we just stopped talking or you break up with me or you're the one that cheated, like it's going to hurt me for the moment. But after that, it's like, wait, that's it. Like I'm still me. Like I just got to move forward with it. Like I'm not going to yeah. stress on that because I did everything right. I didn't do anything wrong. Right. I'm not gonna fucking and that's the thing. That like when, and that's the thing. When you get into a relationship, be be ten toes down and really put your best effort because when it ends, you can close that door. You don't need to walk around and, and come well, back and this, circle the block. I should have done this. Yeah, I should have yeah. done that. Like no, no. Yeah, I, I, my biggest thing whenever it comes to any relationship, and I've said it before, and I, and if you read what I wrote, which I'm hoping you're adding to it. Yes, effort for me is one of the most important things. Mm-hmm. I don't care if you fuck up. Well, to a certain degree. But if there's things that maybe you make a mistake on, but it's what do you do after that? Right. You know, that's what defines you. Oh, I messed up or I fucked up. It's like, what'd you do after that? Mm-hmm. No, I, do you stay there or did you do something better? Did you learn from it? Did you get better from it? And then what did you do after that? So I think effort is so important because even if something were to go wrong and obviously there's certain boundaries and there's certain like non, non-negotiables, yeah. but it's like, Wait, what did you do after that? So for example, my girl, she fucking do some stupid little bullshit there. So that I'll, I'll address it. We'll talk about it, but it's like, okay, moving forward. So now I think, okay, if I told her it was that important to me, and we talked about this and she's not doing anything about it. Now she's not putting effort. Right. And I'll get even deeper. My father, heavy drinker. Mm-hmm. And I've had a lot of issues with that. Mm-hmm. And it's like, he would tell me all the time, oh, I could eat them, but I don't know. Like, I want to change. I'm going to change. And I'm like, all right, bro, you're going to change. You're going to change. Thank you, Jason. Mm. You know? And I get it. You know, it's a little bit deeper. Maybe he needs his own problems. He's a little bit older, you know, yeah. the therapy or fucking Alcoholics Anonymous. Oh, no, that's fucking for pussies. Well, you're a pussy then because <laughs> you can't stop. But the point is, it's like every single time you don't, like, you just give up. You don't try effort just try i don't yeah. care what the fuck you do i don't yeah. care if you fuck up try show me that you care enough to try yeah. and that for me will at least give me give you my respect yeah exactly and especially when it comes to dating like i don't understand these men that like just want this like half ass like value your time like this is your time like this is your life the things that you yeah. put time and effort into they matter you know and there's so many people walking around putting such little effort, getting little results, and then being like, 
well, this just isn't for me. Like dating isn't for me. And it's like, well, you're not trying. You're not, you're not really seeking what works for you. And one thing I'll add to that is I feel like everyone gets really invested in the moment, you know, it, but when we really think about it, it's you're 26, you're 20, what? Nine? 29. I'm turning 30. Next one. <laughs> this month, this month. <laughs> this month. Oh, we're talking about <laughs> Are you a Libra? I'm a Scorpio, even worse. Oh, he told me you're a Scorpio. Yeah, 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 I'm even worse. But, <laughs> but it's like, Konya, I forgot we're fucking old. That we're young and like, it's just a speck we're, of it. Yeah, oh, beautiful. So we're still young. So yeah. I think it's like, you know, I'm turning 30, you're 26, you're 20, 29. A month will go by and whatever I was stressed about may not even be the stress anymore. It's just going to matter in five weeks or five yeah. minutes. So then you hours. think, so now let's talk about you and your last relationship. That's six years. It's a long time. Mm -hmm. But out of, let's say, average 80, 90, 100 years. I want to live till I'm 100. What it's the fuck is, is those six years in the, in 100? A drop in the bucket. You know, exactly. So if we could just remove ourselves, it's like, oh, you like, I'm so stressed or I'm dwelling or this fucker, or my ex and all this shit. It's like, yeah, I'm on. It's right now. Yeah. You have so much. It's like they were, you were alive before them. No, you will be alive after, exactly. on after You say it all the time. Exactly. They come crashing into your life. Don't forget that. But it's like, well, you know, like don't stress over this. If you, if, if you're going to get over it, if you know the situation, it's not going to be a big deal in a day, a month. Why are we stressing it about right now? For real. And like, once you, like, once you break up, like break up, like, and go no contact and stop looking at their page. Like, Stop looking at their page. I have so many friends that look at their ex's page and the, and the girl and the new girl and the old girl and the da 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 da. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, you're stuck in the past. My ex at this point could have gone to the moon and back. I have no idea. I have no idea. Has he tried? Has he tried? You? No, I'm saying like he could have done insane shit and yeah. I would never know because I don't look. You right, 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 right. Has he tried? Yeah, he's tried every, every possible every way. So, every, every possible still way. Does? No, no, not at this time. No. I think the last time was May. In May, not too far. I think a year, but it, you guys ended a year ago. It's not that long, to be honest with you. You know, it isn't, which is my point. No, but he's in another relationship. Sure. You not know? with the escort. Tied it no, up. No, that's just not, not with the escort. Tied up Oguto. Still tied up. I'm not gonna get shit removed. <laughs> not with the escort. <laughs> that's crazy. Um, man. And I and I wish him well. You know, yeah. I really do. Like I, I'm at a it's point in healed. my. Yeah, I'm at a point in my life where like, I just wish him well because I know that I'm well and I know that I'm living a good life, you know, and I'm happy and I'm fulfilled. So like, all I can do is wish the same for him. You know, that's it. I wish him well and I hope he lives a life that he he can be proud of because that's what matters. I saw a video the other day of this guy who was saying like, when one is truly healed is when they can tell their, their family or their parents like, no. Because sometimes, you know, parents will give you shit or family will give you shit because they're family. Mm -hmm. but the minute you fucking kind of like divert yourself from that. So his example was, oh, like they, they're talking shit to you, whatever. But, oh, it's okay because they're family. Like, mm -hmm. oh, it's my mom. It's like, exactly. The minute that you start holding yourself accountable and you start fighting, at essentially your parents, like going against what they're like used to because it's family and all, but yeah. they're your family. My girl's the same thing. Oh, because my mother's always been like this. No, it's because you've accepted your mother to be like that. Yeah. You've all allowed your mother to oh, be like this. Absolutely. All this time. Or your brother or your cousin. All this I'm using an example because in case her mother sees, no, you're, the, you're amazing. It's not, it's not directed <laughs> to you. But the point is, it's, it's that. It's like, oh, because they've always been like this. And it's like, no, it's because you've allowed them. Yeah, to and, be and, like and this. that's the thing. And, and I, and I agree. I agree a little bit and I agree. I disagree a little bit. Sure. I agree a little bit because you allow, you allow and tolerate what, yeah. what, what you, you are in control of what you allow and what you tolerate. Right. And at the same time, it's like to say like, no, you, you control that. Like, no, like other people are responsible and they're accountable for what they sure. do. Yeah, 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 and yeah, a lot no. of the times, like, I'm not going to carry the burden of what you're doing wrong. Like, I cannot do that. No, no, we're I'm on the same page. I'm going to tell you, like, what the boundary is. And should you cross that boundary, then it's up to me to, to decide continue how I'm going to proceed. Right? Yeah, yeah. And one thing, one of the most toxic things that, that I hear all the time is love is unconditional. Love is unconditional. I 
I believe that the only unconditional love that exists is the love for your child. Like that is really what unconditional dog. love is. Or your dog. I love my dog. When your dog looks at you and then you I show up from dogs. work and they're like. <laughs> but like, love, but love, especially love in relationships yeah. is conditional. When we get into an, when we, when we get into a relationship, we have a set of conditions to follow. You're not going to cheat on me and I won't cheat on you. You're going to respect me. I'm going to respect you. The second that one of those gets compromised, you can leave. It's not unconditional. This whole ride or die mentality. I got a ride or die by my man. And da, 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 da. like, no, when, when, when things start going south and things get to a place that no longer honor the values that you came into the relationship with, that's it. You can walk away. And the same with family. Like sometimes family, like force you to do things or be a certain way. Like you have to stand up and say like, no, I have to live life on my terms. I'm never going to be happy if I continue to live on your terms. Yeah, I think when it comes to uh, relationships, it's you want to be in a relationship because you want mm. to be in a relationship, yeah. mm -hmm. you know? So based on what you were saying with conditions, it's, well, if something doesn't check, well, no, I, I know my value. Yeah. I know what Choice. I'm worth. And I'm with you because I want to be with you. Mm -hmm. I don't tolerate that. No te importa de mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love me so much. Exactly. I know what I bring to the table. And I want you to add to that. Yeah. But si tu no cuadra, si, well, si tu no cuadra, oye, vete la, it's true. Yeah, like, I love me what? enough for the both of us. I respect me enough for the both of us. Uh -huh. So I'm willing to walk away if you're not up to par with that. Absolutely. So good. All right. A hundred percent. At the end of the day, it's up to you. You, know, you have to make choices every day. It's choice to be with this person, spend the rest of your life with this person. And if at some point they do something that you don't, that, warrants you for you to feel like hey listen i don't want to be part of this anymore and you have to be wise enough to walk away if you choose to do so at the end of the day the, the choice has to be with, with yourself absolutely yeah i think being secure within yourself is very important and that's yeah. what our mission is it's really trying to build security within people because mm -hmm. we uh, we rely too much on others mm -hmm. to, to find acceptance validation and and it, it could even start like we can even go back to school. Like maybe the, how the teacher treats you. Like, you know, you want to like do more. Like, yeah. so the teacher can, you know, like you're always looking for someone else to want to see you differently. Yeah. And I think now being older and understanding, well, okay, who am I? What do I like? What I don't like? Boo, 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 boo. Okay. Let me just stick to these. Instead of trying to be someone that I'm not mm -hmm. to find that validation, let me stick to my guns and eventually... I'll attract the person that wants to be Exactly. A hundred percent. Fall in love with yourself. <sighs> recognize the things that you want. Stick to them and pursue a life that aligns with that and nothing else. That's it. Yeah, that's that's it. how you get what you want. The, the code. Cheat code. Girl. Cheat code. All right. Yeah. We're going to start wrapping it up right now. Wait, let me tell you. I don't even know who the fuck you are, but thank fucking God that you came on. Okay, that you, you came from the heavens. Like yeah. you have no idea the impact. That you made not only in my life, but I'm hoping for the audience who chooses to fucking listen. But we're gonna get all the good stuff inside. You know what? I've heard that. I've heard that a lot recently. Somebody the other day was like, "You should be a life coach." So maybe I become a life coach. Who knows, That's, man? <laughs> this could be. This could be the catalyst. <laughs> That's my goal too—to be either life or relationship coach. Because I think that you and I we have a very similar mentality. That's why I click with you so much. Every single time you talk, like I don't know if you saw, but I would like jump out of my seat because I had the same mentality. It's like, wait, if you're gonna fuck up, or you're gonna do your own bullshit. Like, all right, bro. Like do it. Yeah. I can't control you. Right? I can control me. But that mentality is built. That really is built. That is effort to get yeah. there. Yeah. You have to, you, I mean, you do have to go through a lot of things, but you also have to be very aware. Yeah. Of a self-awareness. Self-awareness oh is very important because. And the more self-aware you become, the more aware that nobody else has it. So you kind of look at other people and you're like, I'm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah it's a skill set. It's a skill set. It you is. Self-awareness. Self-awareness is hard to, well, a lot of people don't have that. But you got to shape that and you got to nourish that as well. Yeah. But once you have it, it's like you look through, like you look at life differently. Yeah. And how everything you're doing in life, the, from the person you greet in the morning to at the end of the night, how you go to sleep, it changes everything. It does. And it's so important, man. And you can't have healthy relationships without without those kind of set of skills. Absolutely. Absolutely. So with that being said, let's start wrapping it up. And while we wrap it up, we always ask, our, oh, it's time to break up. Yeah. We only have the breakup sign. This is the coffee <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, um, we always end, uh, we try to, end the, we try to end the segment with, um, the guest saying like a final thoughts, final thoughts can be 
anything that you live by, something you want to say to your younger self, something that you want to just spread to the audience. And you said a lot of great things. Okay, a lot of um, snippets. You think you guys got a lot of snippets? What? <laughs> I, gotta, I, gotta go through I got. I got to know. But the, <laughs> yeah, but but for this ending, um, yeah, something that's very very important for you to end it on, like something that's very important to you that you're like, okay, this is anything that I want to leave this earth with. Is this? This is your chance. It pressure. is a lot of pressure, <laughs> but I also want you to understand that you have you have brought so much value to the show right now. Let me let you. me I'm very honestly, I'm so blessed. I'm so grateful to have you on. And I, and I had a little speech too for Wes when he came on. I was like, yeah, oh, I was like, oh, I really got into it because <clears throat> things like this, like my mission in this world, is to try to educate and help people to build that mentality that you have. Because once you have that, you're set. It's it's you're you're bulletproof. Like there's nothing that can happen to you. And that's how I that you're like. Bullets. All right, even if the world ended, where am I at? That's what's that's the first thing you got to worry about. It's where am I at? So I would want you um, to kind of spread whatever energy you want back to the world. You can say it to us. You can say it to your camera over there. But um, essentially, your final. Thoughts. I guess I just I think there's a lot of value in knowing when to leave and the journey to live a good life it starts with you it starts with your ability to recognize what you deserve what you want how you want it when you want it and you are fully in control you can build the life that you want and it starts with you that would be my number one thing that's what i tell myself every day gratitude accountability will get you really far more values yeah you gotta have that gratitude this girl i don't know where the fuck you came from but we're gonna be besties at the end <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, we sat down. When I sat down with you in five minutes, I was like, this is going to be a great episode. <laughs> and even when you reached out, I knew, like, at this point, I've done so much, like, and I have people on, like, I think I'm, this person is, because when you res you messaged us, and, I'm, and I, I was the one who responded, and I saw him, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it was. And then we got on the phone call, and I'm like, okay, like, this is going to be good. Like, I have, like, at this point, I have, like, we both have a good sense of, like, okay, this is going to be a good person we're going to bring yeah. on. And because sometimes we have guests on and they're a little bit more reserved. They don't really yeah. want to open but, uh, up. But we're also pretty good now at navigating through yeah. these conversations. Yeah, we've, but, been, we've been doing this for almost three years now. Yeah. So we kind of already know how yeah, to get you, to you, you, you But know, you yeah. came in, you sat down fresh. <laughs> like a <buddy>. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like a bullet. <laughs> Thank you, guys. You, Thank you. You're on the right path. And I'm so excited for the future. I'm so excited for you. I, really I, I, so I have a feeling this is yeah. not going to be the last that we've seen of each other. Oh, really? No, I want to be your. No, I want to be. I friends. will come back as a recurring guest if we, you guys. We want would me be to. honored to have you on. <laughs> I want to hang out with her. Like next time we go out, we yeah. got to. Hey, I'm, I'm not even Maybe kidding. Like your mentality is very is very different, and it's it's refreshing. It's intoxicating. Yeah. Too. I'm almost. I'm yeah. Yeah. intoxicating too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm almost saying it. Yeah, I'm almost it's elevated. My friends tell me that all the time. <laughs> They're like, your energy is addicting. Like they tell me yes. that all the time. All the I'm time. even thinking like sometimes like whenever we have. Yeah, it feels good. I like it. <laughs> whenever we have like sessions where we're talking or brainstorming, I'm, I'm even thinking fucking getting her on a Zoom call or fucking inviting her and being like, yeah. oh, wait, let's fucking what do you talk. Think? Yeah, yeah. No, because it's true. Because again, I've said it. I already said it before. I'm going to say it again. Your mentality is what it's my goal. I hope it's your goal too. It's our goal of making everyone think like that. Because once you have that again, you're bulletproof, bulletproof. Like there's nothing that someone can tell you that you can't handle at that point. And if we're able to kind of have that energy kind of reciprocated, who knows what we can accomplish with kind sky's, of like that. Sky's energy. the limit. Yeah. So yeah, no, like you were, you were amazing. You were thank you. really a blessing for the, for, for this show. And thank you so much for coming on. Thank Any, you so anything? No, no, thank you so much for your honor. It's for you to take the time and come here and share your experience. Yeah, Be vulnerable. It. And again, at the beginning, this, this, this segment, this episode wasn't about the, the incident that happened, but it was everything that came after. Right. That is what is important. And what was one of the things that I said? It's not about what happened; it's about how like you react. Yeah. yeah. So if, even if something happened, it, what came cool. after? What yeah. came after? And yeah. so you present you you write your own story to your yeah. life. So you 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 know you're in control. So yeah, you're not defined by your mistakes. You're defined of what you do after. Yeah. Your mistakes. You're not who you are. You you're not. Wait. You're not what's been done to you. You are who you are in spite of what's been done to you. That's it. Final thought. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much, Alex. Thank we you. really appreciate it. You are awesome. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. If you're this far in, you learned a lot of good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you're obviously on Patreon. And if you're on the go, you can always listen to us on the podcast. Spotify, yeah, yeah. Spot, uh, Spotify, the podcast app on your iPhone, mm -hmm. um, social media, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and Twitter. We have a website. Alfredbreakup.com, check us out. Buy some merch. <laughs> yeah. Alex, you're gonna put all your stuff down Follow below. Me. 
DM me. Oh, what's your, what's your oh wait, 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 hold on. Time. Yes. Yeah. No, not time. But on the final thoughts, you can sell yourself too. So where, where are you? Find you? Where can people find you? Well, you can um, book me for makeup <laughs> <laughs> if you need makeup uh, at my website, alexalvarezmu.com. Or you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok. It's Alex Alvarez. Two S's. We'll put it right. Re- Alex, just put we'll, it somewhere. Yeah, we'll Alex. find it. We'll send it to Alex. He'll Alex, tag me it. somewhere. He'll do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Guys. Alex, thank you so much. Um, <laughs> really appreciate it. This was You're great. awesome. Thank you so much. You're the best. Thank you so much. So next time, guys. Ciao. Love y'all. <laughs>